Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Happy Crimson Good Tuesday. Mousemus, I love the, the the dabbing Cedric emoji. It's glorious. It's good to see you. Tonight is the return of the Dan. We're getting Dan Polikar in tonight, which is awesome. And we're going to be composing a new track, hopefully two little, little new tracks that are going to be at the very end of the game. And um, that'll be in a little bit, though. Dan will join us later. Edenworth, good to see you. <laughs> You're here for the maple syrup diamonds. Sorry, I haven't seen any cats in the game yet. Yeah, I, my gosh. I really, I want to add a cat in the game. I do. I do. If I, if I have the time, I would love to do that. Go on, Sama. Hello. Good, good evening. Good afternoon. Yes, Eden with this is a comfy room. This is the the little mini bar that's that's in the game. And uh, it's kind of like the, the bar actually kind of looks more art, art deco um, than it may, maybe should at this time of, of the 1900s. The game is set in 1914 and art deco came a little bit later, but I just I couldn't resist and maybe maybe um, Margot's taste is a little ahead of her time. Go on some. <laughs> is there some absinthe in one of those bottles? Um, I. That's a good question because there is, the the poster that's here, that is act an actual poster for absinthe that is from the era. Um, but I don't think there's any. There might not be any absinthe behind the bar. Yes, eating with yes. I need a, a Dido cameo in the game. Yes, if. If and when I add a cat to the Crimson Diamond, um, it'll be Dido. It'll be Dido. Yeah, I don't know. Like the, the spirits here, they're just kind of um, they're not really used for anything. <laughs> they're just there for decoration. Um, but I just I like that whole idea of you know repairing to the the bar area after dinner for brandy and 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 cigars, even though. I probably wouldn't enjoy either of those things. Just that idea is kind of cozy. Um, so, th so there's that. And and if you play the demo, you do see people coming to the bar after the dinner in the demo, and you see Albert smoking a cigar and and, and having a bit of brandy, and, and Nessa and Corvus at the bar as well. <laughs> anyway, so absinthe may have been legal in Canada at the time. When it was absinthe, when was it? When was it made illegal? And I wonder. But I guess the whole appeal of having the game set in far northern Ontario is there's really not much of an authority around, so you can kind of do what you want. And that was kind of an issue that they did have in like the North Amer um, the Northwestern Mounted Police had that issue with some of the wilder areas, uh, especially up in the Yukon area. It was kind of super rough up there because there wasn't a lot of law enforcement. Bill Kuhn, greetings. What a lovely evening. It is a, it's a beautiful evening here in Toronto. It's it's nice and warm. Summer is starting to feel more like summer, but it's not too hot yet, which is kind of nice. I, I don't relish that the, the super humidity we get and we are almost certain to get this summer. But yeah, it's been nice so far. Ah, Master says, uh, Absinthe on the shelf would be nice. A homage to Phant Phantasmagoria 1, which I never played. But yeah, I mean, maybe we, one of those bottles, I could add a text parser. If you look at the bottles, she'll list off some, you know, brandies and, and absinthe and things. And I hear absinthe, it tastes like anise, which I like that taste. So anise. So I, I, um, I don't think I would mind trying that at least. The only law of the cormorants up. Yeah. The, so yeah, this, the whole idea of, you know, this traditional kind of um, mystery setting where there you kind of left to your own devices and there's no real telephone in the area the closest out outside communication they have in the game is a telegraph um, sending a telegram from the train station which is which is where that stuff used to really happen that would be like the hub for communication but the train station is a few hours away from the lodge so it's not super convenient uh, tomorrow is set to be a real scorcher yeah bill can i hear this heat waves going all over the world right now like Spain was in the 40s and that's not about to change anytime soon and I really feel bad for them because that's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot. Yes, eating with you heard absent tastes like any. Yeah, I, and I like the um, all that ritual 
of the sugar cube and everything like that. It just there's something super appealing about that. I wouldn't mind having a taste. I know, and it's got wormwood in it. And I know that it, it it's not really as hallucinogenic as people say, at least not anymore. But I think I'd like the taste actually, just for the taste. <laughs> Eating with you, uh, you say, Bill, can you want a fan art of Cormorant as Judge Dredd? Yeah, the Cormorant, yeah, the Cormorants, um, outside, they have their own little animation. So you say, you get to see them in Chapter 2. Just to Jeffy, Happy Crimson Catoose Day. Jim plays games, Happy Crimson Catoose Day. <laughs> we, yeah, we're gonna get started. I'm going to show, um, some more painting, but it's painting an environment, so it's kind of back to, it's, it's kind of back to 2D. Um, but it's still a bit of a stretch for me, and I'll show you guys why. It's a style that I'm still getting used to. Ilya's painting style, that expressionistic style that he uses, is super challenging for me because I'm such a drawer. Like I'm so mu so much a person who uses line, and we talked about that before. How I, I started off drawing comics and stuff, and that's super 2D and super dependent on line. And now I've, I'm without that crutch. I I consider it a crutch, but um, it's coming along, and I'll, I'll show you guys that really soon. Oh, current, uh, uh, current absent doesn't, doesn't have wormwood in it? I wonder. So what's that? So it's actually star anise or licorice flavor that they're putting in, in, in absence now? I also really love the color, of course. Oh, wow. Lucas, thanks for the bits. Happy kiss. Karimzin Katuesday. Good to see you. Yeah, I, um, yeah, tonight I was just mentioning earlier, just slightly earlier, because it hasn't really been that long since I started talking, but... Um, I, uh, I, I'm happy to report that Dan, Dan is coming in tonight, um, around 9.30 or so, we'll, we'll have Dan on, and we're going to be doing some composing of music, which I love, because it's something that I can sort of sit back a little bit more, and I get to relax and listen to what he's up to, and catch up on chat better. So that's going to be that, I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, Jim plays games you had absinthe once. Oh no! The only time you blacked out and had to be told what you did the previous night? Did you paint like a really gorgeous painting or something? I, I, I somehow doubt it, but you never know. Um, and uh, yeah, t and what I'm also going to be doing is, I don't know when I'll get to do this, but tomorrow morning I, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be giving a talk to some students uh, that are going to the Staffordshire University in London and they've got sort of a game design type of set of courses there and everything and they're doing a special week of events and jams and I'm going to be their closing speaker so I'm going to be like live at eight, nine o'clock in the morning my time and it's like a more civilized hour for them but you know the time difference and everything and that talk that I'm giving it's going to be about 25 to 30 minutes and I will be recording that later just on my own and I'll be putting that up on my YouTube channel and it's going to basically be, it's stuff that if you know, if you guys have come, been coming to stream, you'll know a lot about already, like, you know, how I started off with the Crimson Diamond and what I was doing before the Crimson Diamond. But I will be talking about things that, um, like more directed towards the students. I mean, this, this is, they're just coming out of their first year. And um, the, the lady who contacted me was saying that they're interested in knowing about employability, like how to get work. And the kinds of work you can get so that aspect of it i don't really talk so much about in terms of the things that that i've done to get work that have that have worked for me and and the combination of a bunch of different types of ways to do that so that's kind of what most of the most of the talk will be about and so yeah if you're interested in 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 hearing what i have to say about how i got to you know start working on space warlord organ trading simulator and how I got to do the Playdate game, and how I got to do the, the limited run games, Monkey Island Anthology, 30 year an anthology anniversary edition, uh, how I got to do that book and everything. The thing is, is there's never like one solution to like one answer why those things happen. They're, oh, they're so much more complicated because it's usually like one or two or three or four or five things that had to happen in order for that other thing to happen. So I'll be kind of breaking that down a bit and hope that my perspective on those things and my experience on how those things came about will be at all helpful for students. I hope so. Yes, it was Staffordshire. Oh, Staffordshire is not in London. Okay, wherever Staffordshire is. I have not looked it up. All I know is it's like a, the London time zone. Oh, Bill Kuhn, your vintage computer project this week has been finding someone to service the three electric typewriters you brought back from Computer Reset, plus the one from my church that is very jammed. I did find someone with the the, can only service the IBM Selectrics, not the Royals. I ha my mom has an electronic typewriter. It's you know the one that that prints the best on the thermal paper and stuff. I, I it had like a dot matrix display, 
on the, the unit and you would type and you'd see the preview on the little dot matrix or, or display and you can correct it and everything and when you were set with that line you'd press send or enter and then it would print out on the paper and it was like magic to me I loved it and I think she actually even did have a, a typewriter but uh, I have to I should ask her if she still has the typewriter or the electronic type the electronic typewriter because um, I'd love to see both of those again Arabella good evening good to see you <laughs> Yeah, either way, the, 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 the presentation could easily be called Finding Work as a Starving Artist, The Eternal Struggle. I, I, I really feel like I, I remember how it felt to graduate from art school and being kind of scared. So I'm hoping that, you know, I'm going to be encouraging and, and tell them, you know, that you guys are you know in a good place. And as far as I'm concerned, I, 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 I asked um, the organizer to send me like a breakdown of the stuff that they've taken and what programs they've learned and stuff during their first year and they already know more than i do so i think i'm gonna definitely um lead with that saying you know you're further ahead than i was and they didn't have you know the kinds of courses that you guys are taking they did not exist when i was going to school so already um feel good about that like you're really getting prepared well <laughs> instead of having to learn things on the job or just so teaching yourself Beta Human Studio, good to see you. Employer, I hardly know her. Okay, yes. Okay, yeah, it's the Midlands. Okay, Staffordshire is the Midlands. UK is all one time zone. Yeah, that's the only thing I looked at was was uh, what time zone it was. Because that's the pertinent part. Oh no, Royals, the Royals Billiken says the uh, electronic Royal uh, typewriters, electronic typewriters, simply will not stay unbroken so their parts cannot even be salvaged to other units, he said. I wonder if you could 3, 3D print units now. I mean, 3D print parts now for, for stuff like that um but let's um i'm gonna uh i guess introduce myself to anyone who's new welcome to crimson katuste we do this every tuesday at 8 p.m sometimes it's me doing art stuff and then i i've been working on a let's play indiana jones and the last crusade the graphic adventure apparently i'm close to the end so i gotta pick another game and i don't know if you guys can suggest anything in chat i want to keep playing adventure games i want to keep playing uh, EGA adventure games, preferably, and I just, um, Indiana Jones, of course, was made by LucasArts. The previous game I played was Lu Last Half of Darkness, which was Soft Lab, Soft Lab Laboratories or something like that, and my first game that I last played was uh, Personal Nightmare, which was by Horrorsoft, and I kind of want to do another EGA game, but I want to do one from a different studio. Um, possibly a Sierra game that I haven't played before in EGA, but or, or something else. If you guys know of any other EGA adventure games by just other studios I could try that I've not played before, that that would kind of be what I, I'm looking to do because even though, you know, games from a same, the same studio can change so much over time, I really want to get that feeling for the studios because each studio had completely different approaches and they have different feelings and different interfaces, different solutions for things. And I really feel like I'm learning a lot of a lot of the design stuff that they were doing at that time from playing the game. So that having that variety for me would be really good. Pong? Lucas, you're saying I should play Pong. <laughs> uh, anyway, it said, uh, says, I wish I, I, I did have someone come in and talk to my class about finding a computer job. My professors have been stuck in academia their entire careers so they didn't know about the real world. I, yeah, I'm going to be talking a bit about my college experience and how, for me, a lot, all of my professors were working illustrators. So they had, you know, very up-to-date knowledge about what the industry was like. And I think that was super helpful. But I always really loved having those people come in from outside and talk to, talk to the class. I always found that super instructive and inspirational. So I'm only hoping I can do the same for the students. We'll see. I will let you know. And yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'll be able to do it this week because I'm pretty busy with other, like, with... Um, Ilya's game and also t getting this talk together and then giving it tomorrow like super early in the morning I'm, It's a really busy week, so I don't know if I'll I'll be taping it this week But I will tape it eventually hopefully while it's still fresh in my mind <sighs> Yes, uh, Jim plays game selects loom um, suggest loom uh, Quest for glory Zach McCracken Gold rush. Yeah, that's another one. Yes. Yeah, uh, EGA Phantasmagoria EGA space quest for Four. This is an EGA Space Quest 4. Earthrise 1990. Oh, Bilkin, I've not heard of that one before. Um, I should write, be writing that down. So, for. Okay. So, let's see. It won't, yeah, it won't be Zach because um, that's a LucasArts game and I'm just finishing up Indiana Jones. 
But Quest for Glory, I've played the, both the first and the second one, which are the EGA ones. Gold Rush, I Gold Rush looks really scary uh, and impossible, and I'm kind of really intimidated. Also, Manhunter, of course, which also is, looks super impossible. But I will write that down as well as a, a suggestion. Police Quest, Space Quest Four. Is it easy to find Space Quest Four EGA? Because I can't even imagine. I think I feel like that's one that they just kind of. Uh, automatically changed converted the palette instead of being a purpose made EGA game but Earthrise interesting I've not I have to look that up um, maybe play a game from Polarware so let's see Polarware yeah I, yeah I wanted I want to try and expand my horizons alter to destiny oh wow Never you never played a Betty Hume studio. It uh, always played on loop on Tandy. Okay, Altered Destiny. Something. His Space Quest 4 is the worst one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think I've seen screen caps of Space Quest 4 EGA and it, it almost looks like an afterthought. And I really, if, you know, if I had my, my druthers, I'd prefer an EGA game that was designed as an EGA game. Hey, D Reaper 90 welcome to chat. Happy Crimson Kid Tuesday. I have never played Police Quest. Uh, I hear, pl I know a Retrograde Tom was playing Police Quest 2 just this past weekend, and he loves Police Quest 2. I don't know how, what, what people's opinions are of the Police Quest. We talked about this before, I think, a little bit. And Police Quest 2 doesn't have the driving, in which case people seem to favor that one, something like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, Japanese version of Police Quest 2. Japanese version, PQ2. And no, you have not played a single one of the Please Quests. <laughs> Please Quest Harsh? Yeah, Please Quest the Imaginous. I think I remember you saying that. And yeah, you're not alone in feeling that way about it. PQ1 in the driving simulator. Oh man. I don't even really like driving in real life, so I can only imagine. Um, but yeah, Please Quest would be one that would definitely be interesting to me. BG games, B. <laughs> Play the BGs. Okay, Beta Human Studio, please. The question is great. Walkthroughs mandatory. I have I have no no shameful feelings about consulting a walkthrough. Um, we had to use one to get through Brynwald Castle in Last Crusade, so I will totally exploit that if I have to. But yeah, that's good. I'm glad we have some suggestions. I will also do some research on my own and just even look at my my pre existing my GOG library currently my steam library see if i have anything already in there that i just happen to have already being proposed question is hard the driving cosmic boy three good to see you by the way good evening um yeah so we'll, we'll look into that but that's something like next week we'll be in art stream maybe we'll finish off last crusade maybe we won't but um i, I start i still have to think about it um <laughs> oh yes fluke yes <laughs> Lucas, yes, Hugo's House of Horrors, I've played all three of those games, and I actually, um, there is um, a Let's Play with Skippy Granola that I did of all three, back to back to back, but unfortunately the audio um, broke on it, 40 minutes in, I was told, and that's a big shame because that one's not recoverable, Skippy, he deleted his YouTube channel, and I tried, I, I did, uh, before he did that, he, he made uh, the, the videos available for download, but um, the audio broke on my version, I didn't check until too late. Legend of Zelda 1. Happy Crimson Tuesday, Blah Holson. Good to see you. <laughs> Mystery House. Is Mystery House playable? I think, yeah, I think there is, because they made a public domain, so there must be some kind of port. Um, but yeah, that's another consideration. Um, okay, so I'm going to just quickly uh, just run the trailer and go through the usual news stuff. Oh, um, dev update. Yeah, I have not touched the Crimson Diamond in quite a few weeks now. And because I've been working full time on my friends game that I will show you guys tonight. And it, I've learned a lot. I've learned Blender. I've learned um, Clip Studio Paint. And I've especially learned that when I'm finished with this contract, I am going to be focusing super, super, super hard on finishing the Crimson Diamond because it feels awful not to be working on it for this long. And I'm getting all like antsy, like I really need to get back to it. So we're, so that is something else I've discovered while while working on other stuff. Not to say I won't be working on other other stuff while I work on the Crimson Diamond stuff, but the Crimson Diamond will be my main thing through to the end of this year. 
Um, I have been doing some some contract work uh, with other places, and I'm gonna I think I'm gonna be telling those places that I need to hold off on that stuff for at least until the end of the year and see how far I get because the Crimson Diamond is not gonna get any more finished if I don't work on it, so I am going to double down on that. Yes, a lot of crimson detractors on my plate for sure. Yes, I said the the magic word blender. <laughs> Cousin Boy 3, you said you're getting the Crimson Diamond for Christmas. Uh, DV for 90, please include soft locks in the Crimson Diamond. That's a really good point. The, I don't think there are any soft locks in the Crimson Diamond, but there's a lot you can miss. Um, there's a lot you can miss. Even in the demo, there's a lot you can miss. You There are... Um, there are secret conversations in the in the demo. There's at least there's at least three of them you can miss in the demo alone. So there, don't worry. There there are. It's not. Um, it's linear, but it's linear. Linear plus, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, but I've been trying to avoid soft logs overall. But I do want to give people stuff that that they might miss the first time around. Yeah. Oh good, see, exactly, Edenwith, you worked with the guy who made an iOS port of Mystery House. It was a lot of fun interviewing him and talking about that. Yeah, so the, yeah, there, there's, uh, I'm sure, and it's so wonderful that they made Mystery House public domain. Alright, Jim Plays Games asks, do I ever run into creative blocks when working on the Crimson Diamond? Um, yes, there was a stage in the game design with the story that I was running into blocks because with it's almost like, um, it's, it's like making... Uh, I don't know what analogy. You're, it's, you're building something and it has to go in a certain order and if you change one thing, there's a bunch of other things connected to that thing that also have to be sifted around and changed. It's like it's like creating a giant puzzle. And so that part, would, it was tough to uh, make everything work like I wanted it to work. But in terms of art stuff, art stuff was pretty straightforward, I would say. Um, the programming, there was a major block with the programming. I, I, I mentioned it, this to you guys that um, the AGS, Adventure Game Studio, has some programming limitations and I hit up against some of those limitations and I needed to find workarounds, so that was a huge block for me. But it, that block didn't last that long, I don't think. It just maybe a week or two where I had to go on the Adventure Game Studio forums and ask for help and people were super helpful with solutions to that. So that was another sticking point. Um, but overall, like nothing where I was... I just... Oh yeah, another... <laughs> Another huge block was getting the demo on Steam in the first place because Steam is extremely hard to put stuff on. Like the games you see on 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 Steam that I, I mean there's so many games on Steam, but every single one of them it's like a trial by fire every time. Like I don't I keep forgetting how to do stuff. Like updating the demo, I forgot how to do that after I did it the first time and that took me a long time. But yeah, the first time putting something up on Steam was super blocky and frustrating. It's not user friendly at all, especially for someone who's not much of a, a technical person. Um, so that was a block. Lots of mini blocks, but nothing. And that was probably the one, the most significant one, if I had to say, of any blocks that they experienced. The story stuff was just a matter of shuffling stuff around and, 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 and making adjustments here and there. And that was a little frustrating, but Steam was the most frustrating thing of, of any aspect of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, Jim plays games exact opposite can do the coding but struggle with the graphics. Yeah, the graphics, you know, well, we we did the, the exterior of the Royal Canadian Museum, and that took a long time, but we weren't blocked on it. Like, we pretty much just kind of noodled along with it. And that's how I find, um, which is the good and bad thing about the art stuff for me, is I know I can eventually produce something that 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 is good enough, but how long that takes is the huge difference between something being frustrating and something being, oh, yeah, that was fine. And that's kind of what I'm experiencing right now with the graphics I'm working on because it's a painted painted style which I'm not used to and uh, it's a style I'm not used to and so that's been frustrating for me because everything's taking like three times, four times longer than I'd like it to. And yes, Arabello, I am using the Adventure Game Studio. I love it. I love it. Yeah, there are some limitations but there's nothing that I can't do in it that... There's nothing that I want to do that I can't and anything that I feel like I'm having trouble with I know it's just me <laughs> and my my limited knowledge and ability with with the programming a blah holds you get most pu stuck with puzzle design interesting aha 
the pu yeah the puzzles in the game are I I I, I don't think I had too much trouble with that because I didn't try to be tricky or clever with them. I just tried to do something pretty straightforward. Oh, for all to Nova Scotia, my favorite my favorite track um, out of all the MIDI stuff we have. But yeah, let's let's get into showing the, the trailer really quickly. Um, welcome to Crimson Cut Tuesday. I'm Julia. I'm uh, making the Crimson Diamond. I'm not currently making it, but I'm gonna get back to it. I've I've re re solidified my my need to like just focus on it more and d not be so distracted like after this talk that i'm gonna give yeah i, I stuff like that I, I can't turn down because i know how much of an impact that stuff made on me when i was in school so i'm definitely going to take that stuff still um, but now i don't have anything else on the go with that stuff that's the only talk i really have scheduled right now um but um yeah i'm making the crimson diamond i'm making everything in it except for the music and dan will be along to show you how awesome he is about making the music for it i wish i was as fast as him um making everything else as he is with the music um but he'll be along later 9 30 i think 9 30. and yeah um i'm hoping to launch it prop i don't know <laughs> i the release date right now is it was supposed to be like late 2022 but yeah i don't know about that it's probably gonna get pushed back. It's probably gonna get pushed back. <laughs> ah. Yeah, let's. I'll, but I will play the trailer uh, to show you guys the kind of game it is. If you've never played like an old school from the late '80s, early '90s adventure game with a text parser interface, you can take a look. Um, there is a tutorial if you've never played an old adventure game. There is a tutorial in the demo that is available on Steam. The demo and it'll teach you kind of how to play the basics of it but yeah let's let's run the trailer and then um we'll get over a couple other things the usual stuff i want to share with you guys and get into clip studio paint all right let's turn this music off get into the trailer and i will join you guys after that crimson ontario was once a prosperous lively mining town but that was a long time ago now it's quiet, nearly deserted, and some folks aim to keep it that way. Nancy Maple is an aspiring mineralogist assigned to follow the trail of a dazzling diamond. An intriguing cast of characters has converged under one roof, each meaning to get their own way. Or else. Will Nancy untangle the mysteries and machinations before it's too late? Will the sleepy town of Crimson shine once more? Find out in The Crimson Diamond, an upcoming adventure game by Julia Minamata. The Crimson Diamond demo is available on Steam and Itch.io for Windows PC and Mac OS. Okay. Yes, Witch Strandings, Mousemus. Witch Strandings, um, yes, then that actually leads me into my next thing. So. Yes, Witch Strandings. This is Witch Strandings. Um, this, these are just some of the screen caps from it. Witch Strandings is the third game that I've made with Zalavir and Strange Scaffold. And it is um, being published by Modern Wolf. There is an amazing trailer, actually, you guys. I, um, in fact, I am going to just queue up the trailer if I can find it. One moment, because I do want to play it. It's awesome. Uh, oh, is, are you guys are, are you guys seeing my my screen? Uh, boo, boo, boo. Big Julia face. Okay, Big Julia face. While I find the the, the trailer for this, um, Modern Wolf Death. Oh, Death Stranding. Oh, uh, Witch Strandings trailer. I was gonna prep this and then I just forgot. I know that's a great story. Okay. Yes, eating with yes. TCD will be released when it is done. That's all we need to know. Yeah, I'll show you guys what it, what the game looks like. I'm gonna just queue up the trailer, and hopefully it's not gonna it's not gonna be um okay. All right, I think I've got this queued up. Let's turn up. Oh no, I said stop it. Okay, I'm going to pause the music, and then we're going to share um, this screen. Ooh, okay. 
try to share this screen. Do, do, do. On show and tell. Okay, oh, it's already on. What do you know? Okay, wonderful. And I'm going to full screen it. And hopefully you guys will be able to hear it. Okay. Dinner's ready. Be there in just a second, Mom. There are tough things in this forest. And you are not one of them. You have to help us. Save us. From her. All right, so that's that. Hopefully the sound was not too loud. Um, and wow, my, my uh, green screen is going a little nutty. One second. Let's see if I can fix this. And hopefully you could hear that too. Oh, that's better. Okay. Great. And yes, yeah, so, so for this game, for um, Witch Strandings, I did pixel art. So, you know, as you can see, it's very tile based. So these little like berry um, pictures I did, I did these little animals. So you can see there's a bear just on top of this um, dialogue thing. And yeah, mushrooms and things. This is coming out July the 7th. So it's it's actually less than a month from now, this will launch with uh, with Modern Wolf. And it looks like, yeah, like the Nightbot has thrown up some of those links for it. So there is a, a Steam page. You can watch the trailer again. You can wishlist it if you think this looks like something interesting that you'd want to play. But yeah, that's coming out really soon. And yeah, speaking of Crimson Diamond, um, things that are distracting me from, from working on Crimson Diamond. So this is one. But yeah, I still plan on doing Strange Scaffold stuff um, at when I'm finished with my contract because that stuff it's not full-time work it's like here and there I get work and it's I love working with with Zelavir and I love working with his teams the the projects are always so unique and interesting and um definitely going to keep that up but my main 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 thing will be the Crimson Diamond okay so that's that I think that's all I really want to show we're going to move right into not Photoshop but we're going to move right into this 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 go this gorgeous <laughs> weird thing. Um, so this is the um, Clip Studio Paint and it does look it starts out as um, kind of a, a much more heavily modeled thing. So I started off with actual 3D model modeled pieces for this. Oh, let me start the music up again. Oh no, I did did paint just crash? <laughs> Did everything crash? Am I still around? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hold on, sorry. It... <laughs> yeah, it came- I just wanna- uh, but I think paint crashed, so I'm so sorry, I might have to restart it. It came out cute, but I, I still have a lot of work to do on it, and I wanted to show you guys exactly what, what I mean by that. The process of this whole thing uh, was 2D concept art, so line art concept art, building everything in Blender, uh, rendering it, lighting it, rendering it, um, setting a proper camera in the right place, and then from there, uh, painting over the 3D models. But I painted them too closely. I painted them too tightly, and yeah, I definitely, um, I definitely need to restart paint because it totally crashed. Oh no! You guys are seeing my task manager. Oh, it didn't crash. Oh, what happened? Oh, oh. 
Okay, oh, you can see it. Okay, I don't know why what happened there. But, yeah, so you can see that I, when I started off modeling this stuff, it, uh, oh, wow, this might be unusable. Yeah, um, Asimus, yes, it's a 2D picture in the end. Oh, no. This, this isn't good. Sorry about that. Uh, yikes. I'm just gonna restart Clip Studio Paint, I think. Uh, oh, it's yeah, it, it just it crashed. System down. Okay, uh, I'll, I will load that up again. Uh, but if we, you know what, if if this, if I can't, if I can't stream Clip Studio Paint tonight, I will work on the bucket. So no harm done. Yeah, it's a 2D picture, and then so what I have to do is I'll, I'll show you some of the stuff Ilya suggested with it, and I do know what I did was too tight because I'm really. I'm not I'm not used to working with painting so I was super I stuck super close to the model because I didn't want everything to just dissolve into a gloppy mess of paint um, but I, I, I know that I have to get more painterly with it is the whole system down okay I'm still here right you guys can still see me I, I'm still streaming I'm still streaming okay good um, and I think also, I'm also going from a working file now that is not on my Google Drive, so hopefully that'll be fine. Okay, uh, and then I will switch I will switch to Clip Studio when it's started back up again. Captioner's frozen. Uh, captioner frozen. Frozen back. Are we back? Back. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why. It doesn't, um, it doesn't really play that well with, with Clip Studio Paint, and it could just be lag or something. I don't know. But yeah, I will show you guys the reference layers for this stuff. So the reference layer, so this was the 3D modeled piece that was that was rendered in Blender and then lit. And then from there, I took each of these elements and I've painted over them. But when I painted over them initially, um, they, I painted super tight on them. Oh wait, we're supposed to, yeah, you're supposed to see something. Okay, how's how's that? So sorry. Um, okay. Not seeing it and seeing it now? Seeing now. Okay, good. Seeing now. This was, this is the, the Blender model of the kitchen, which I think I showed you guys last time. Okay, good. Yeah, this is the Blender Studio, uh, the Blender Studio the blender file that w that was lit and rendered and output and then I, I put each element separately so the fridge is a completely separate element and the cupboards and everything painted them all separately but you can see I was actually um... oh. I st this was the model uh, on the fridge and then I added this layer of paint on it but it's still really, it's too tight and really not all that painterly. And so I've been trying to add onto it. And so here, you know, and so I've been trying to make it more scrappier looking. Because this is actually going to be quite small on the screen. So in order for that to show, I need to, I need to kind of, oh crap. I just dropped my phone on the floor. Right. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yes, Jim plays games. I only just learned how to use Blender, um, so that took a long time. But yeah, this this um, this uh, so that's a layer that I added, and I started adding other kind of homier details on this. Um, so this stuff is all painted in here to so the Blender, and there's a shadow, and there's like a plant on top. All this stuff, the details on the cupboards. I started working on the cupboards today. Uh, but yeah, just trying to, uh, just kind of making it more painterly, even, and, but still give it that look of the model, which I'm, which I, it's, it's something I am struggling with. Like these things here on this rack are meant to look like tools, but I only ever really modeled the cylinders. Oh no, did the mic get hit? Uh, hold on, let me see if I can fix that. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Sound settings. Crackling? Uh oh. Um, let me check there. How's that? I just kind of like there. How's that? 
I kind of the connection was a little bit loose. The device properties is okay. Okay, that fixed. Great. Okay. Yeah, wonderful. The cable was loose. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, and so I have to kind of um and even deciding what color I want the fridge to be really because the fridge um oops. I'm not sure how I feel about the pinkness of the fridge. So these are all things to really be explored. I might just make it look match more with the carpet. But it's this idea of, you know, looking what I had underneath and making sure that generally the form is still being followed, but trying to be less tight with it. And so that's that's the hard thing for me to, in, in terms of learning what the style is. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to just slowly add more personality to the, to the scene. Um, and yeah, I was actually working on this piece of bread most recently. And I think, yeah, next thing, the most obvious thing I think I need to fix on this is, are these, because these are basically supposed to be tools, and they're just called Just Tools Reference on this. Um, where are they? There's a lot of layers of these things. Okay, well, I can just paint right over. It's not a big deal. So as you can see, I, I even uh, painted... If we look really cl In fact, let's look really closely at one aspect. So here, for instance, this... This uh, fridge... So this is what the model looked like. I mean, the fridge. The stove. This is what the model looks like. And then I painted over with that impasto brush that we've been using for the, for the whole... Um, for the whole game but i do need to put more of like a creative stamp on this stuff and, and not um, stick to it as closely as i have been so this stuff for instance i'm, I'm glad you dig the style jim plays games it's it's f like i like the style too and it's really going to be fun to see a game that looks like this because it's kind of not not that usual to see but it's it is a lot of work yeah, Mousemus. In fact, uh, Elia sent me a video about um, Disco Elysium, and Disco Elysium did the same thing, where they modeled everything in 3D and then painted over it. Of course, they did it much more elaborate, elaborately, but it's the same general, it's the same general idea that they did. And so, it's a definitely, it's a style that uh, has been used before to a different effect. But I think it is. It's a really nice. A compromise but of course after you know a, a night of trying to get this stuff to look right um, I just I really miss my 2d I really miss my um, I really miss my um, pixel art because yeah I, I, I really don't feel like I'm much of a painter but I do actually what I do want to um, I do want to I do want to um, paint a cover for the game for the Crimson Diamond stuff. So I'm trying to think what a ladle looks like now. I don't. How do we do a ladle? Does this work? modeling stuff in 3d i would probably use to use the skill of modeling in 3d if i if there was something i needed to figure out um and i have done before like i used sketchup a little tiny bit when i was doing some illustration of an like an overpass and i couldn't get the geometry right so i did build stuff i've done like a minor version of it but i am glad to be learning this now well, you know, while I got paid, while I'm getting paid. But yeah, nothing makes you want to go back to pixel art faster than having to try to struggle through doing something like this. But I will say that, yeah, I mean, it, I would not have mot motivated myself to do it otherwise, so. And it, w I will, it will be a skill that serves me well, even if I never work in this style again. I, I'm going to have this in my back pocket as something I can do for myself, if I need to. 
Yes, the crisp single pixel single pixel eraser. I miss yes, very much miss all that stuff. Would this approach to work for pixel art scenes to gym play games? My opinion would be not really because I actually one of my when I first started uh, when I first started um, streaming pixel art um, on Twitch, I looked at some old Sierra backgrounds and I was breaking down their perspective and they totally don't work perspective wise. They're completely faked perspective, and my game is also completely faked perspective. I, so I don't think. I, for, at least for the Sierra style, I don't think it would benefit all that much from from actually modeling everything in 3D. Like, if you had something that was more realistic, potentially, I could see that working. But yeah, I don't, honestly, I don't see... For that the specific style that I'm going for, I don't really see uh, what the benefit would be to adding that extra time. Uh, see, Masmi says, once you get basic blenders, I'm going to try to save as little as possible, which is really hard for me because I compulsively save. But you can see how long it takes. Um, Masmi says, once you get basic blender skills, it's very easy to quickly to pro prototype scene composition, even for 2D drawings. I, I might do it. Um, I just, I never felt the need for any of the stuff that I've done in the Crimson Diamond because it's very, it's very staged kind of in a way. Um, and yeah, I never, I never really felt like I was blocked when we talked about the, we talked about blocks earlier. I never really felt the need to do that myself. Because I figure I'm not much of a perspective person. I'm not much of a... and I never use perspective grids or anything like that. I just figure I'll fake it and if it kind of looks okay then I'll just try to get away with it. That's been my philosophy so far and no one's called me out on it yet so I'm, I think I'll just stick with that, you know? The problem with ladles is ladles do have um, curves to them that I I just didn't know enough about Blender to model that and I, I really don't want to change that too much. <laughs> yes, Joe is here for you. Good to see you. You see, you finally decided to update the Crimson Diamond for a modern audience in the cutting edge of the third dimension. Yeah, yeah I, I, I have not. Uh, that actually, I want that end part to be bigger. I think. So. And the, yes, you've you've mentioned the grease pencil before, just a Jeffy. I'm scared because I just like I can learn more. Do I want to learn more? Um. I want to make this a comically big ladle. I think. That's better. Yeah. I could, I mean, I see every day I see gorgeous stuff on Twitter about this beautiful stuff people are doing in Blender. And yeah, it's a, it's a free tool. It's kind of amazing that, that it is, you know? Um, but my gosh. It's very different from what I usually use. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Joe's here for you. <laughs> Most adventure game franchises hit their stride with when they jump to 3D. Oh sure, I think I, we did mention it on a number of occasions. That's that's exactly when I stopped playing adventure games is when they went to when to when, when they went to uh, 3D. Yeah, the, the label is, is comically oversized, but I feel like um, that's not too bad of a thing, because it's, uh, it's kind of a cartoony and exaggerated game. So. Oh. Oh my gosh, I, Joe's here for you. I didn't even realize there was a Simon the Sorcerer 3D. Yeah, I think yeah that was that was exactly when I when I lost interest in, in computer games. 
Um, I had gotten uh, King's Quest VII for Christmas, I think. And I played it a bit, but my computer really was not equipped to play King's Quest VII. And it was really choppy on my computer at the time, and I'm like, eh, this isn't... And it, the style was okay, I guess, but I didn't like the interface for that either. And yeah, I just kind of like totally fell off of it, really. I'm gonna put a hook here. You can't see it's a hook yet because it's... Uh, it's not lit properly yet. It's my eternal struggle with this. I can't even tell that it's, it's a hook. I need to light something. I need to add like a highlight dot or something to that. Oh, it has to be higher, I think. Like there. Yeah, I'm kind of intimidated making stuff up in in this style because it's there is a realism still attached to it. I just it has to still read well, and that's a part, kind of the, the part I, I have trouble with. Oh, Jim plays games. Yeah, and the Blender interface is extremely different from from Photoshop. And in ways I really do like it though. Ugh. Yeah, that, that hook is still not working. It's not um it's not thick enough here at the bottom. Yes, Joey's here for you. Yeah, the the KQ Seven, King's Quest Seven, the cartoon one. I never, I never got to the, uh, King's Quest Eight, the three D RPG thing. No, never did. Yeah, Jester Jeffy, you lost interest a lot in piece in a lot of PC games in the early three D era. Era, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, you're you're now discovering that era is three D games now, and you have they have that '90s charm going for them. Yeah, I, I wonder about that. Like, I wonder, are they worth that, that revisit? And also, the other thing that was coming out at that time, of course, was uh, FMV games, and I was totally not interested in those either, so... I, that, there was a lot of reasons why I kind of stopped... playing stuff. Oh, Half-Life Bloodhotson you recommend? Which I've actually never played. Duh. Beta Human Studio says, That's a great thing about using Blender. If you hate the interface, just wait six months. Ah, oh, Deus Ex. Jim plays games you, for the first time you played it, and it was good. Ah, oh, Master's Normality has an interesting take on, three, on 3D adventures. Yeah, I actually, um, yeah, I've seen a Let's Play of that. Yahtzee and his friend Gabriel back in the day played a, uh, did a Let's Play of Normality. And it's very 90s. <laughs> it's very 90s. That still doesn't work for me. It's like... the I gotta make the hole a little bigger, I think. In the ladle. I gotta make the hole bigger. Yeah. Oh boy, I'm just gonna just do it all the same. Grumble. I'm just gonna like make the end of it flare out comically too, so I can accommodate that larger a larger peg hole, because it's not working for me visually right now. Yeah, Jesse Jeffy lost interest with FMV as well, yeah. So it looks like, yeah, I mean, I hear a lot of people have that same experience where we just kind of fell off of it with the FMV and, and early 3D. 
But nowadays, you know, there's no shortage of, of options, which is wonderful. Yeah, Joe's here for you. Yeah, there's some old hidden old school gems. Half-Life, Deus Ex. But yeah, it was like a lot of figuring out. Yeah, that was a, that was a, a lot of experiment experimentation in that time. So of course, I don't. Yeah, I didn't expect them to to hit it out of the park for you know first thing or anything like that. Of course, but you know when you only get you know like two games a year, you kind of feel like you don't want to spend it on something that you just. <laughs> It's not that great of an experience. But nowadays, yeah, it's a it's a wonderful time to love games. Never been a better time to like games. If, like not only is all the old stuff still available, but uh, there's new stuff being made that looks like what I like. Love it. Uh, Jesse Jeffy, when you got your CD-ROM drive, you played lots of Seventh Guest and, and Sherlock Holmes. I played my uh, what, yeah. One of my first CD games was Return to Zork, and I loved that game actually. Bad Mojo. I hear good. I hear good things about Bad Mojo. Yeah, <laughs> Beta Human Studio. Two games per year. Luxury. It, yeah, it reminds me of um the the four Yorkshiremen. Luxury. Yeah, like one for my birthday maybe, and then one for Christmas. You know. But during the year, sometimes we'd get games because I think I've mentioned before that my dad was kind of a part of this pirating, pirating network of office dads, computer pirate network of office dads. And so uh, we would sometimes get games that, you know, not, dur not during those two times of uh, saving again takes forever. Not during the, you know, so that I would get boxed games twice a year, maybe. But during the year, yeah, sometimes here and there. Or if we would um, borrow games from Compu Library, which was a thing, you could do that, and you could just copy the discs. That also happened. Oh, Joey's here for you. He said Bad Mojo is very unique and short, but you pretty much need a guide. I remember when that came out, and I remember reading a uh, review of it and being very intrigued. Oh, nice. Oh, okay, so it's on YouTube edited as together as one video. Even better. So that ladle turned out okay, and that was relatively pain-free. Uh, uh, what's another um, one of those <laughs> kitchen items that is hanging often? Uh, there is, yeah, like, usually like a spatula or something. So let's do a spatula as the second thing. Yes, exactly. Jim plays games, demos from cover discs on magazines, and we were happy about it. Yeah, I, um... I still have this wonderful, like, and they were wrapped in foil, and they were awesome. I still have some some of those. At least one I still have. So let's make this one. Oh, I forgot to. I got to do the. I got to do the shadow for this spoon. Almost forgot. So. I will mask out. I will mask out the parts the parts of the shadow that are covering the spoon. But first, I'm just gonna blend this out. And then there's this color. Oops, wrong color. This color, lighter color. Oops. And then lighter color. Oh, no, I was in the wrong layer. Hold on. This one and then the lighter color goes this way. Yeah, that's better. Then go lighter. Uh, this is not blending as well as I'd like. It should be a slam dunk.
this the thing with this brush is the first stroke is you can see translucent you have to go over everything twice for it to be opaque but if i don't want it to be opaque and uh then you kind of have to go over an area once so you kind of have to do stuff in one stroke hmm. Okay, let's move this over, and I will mask out the part that I'm not using. They have they have layer masking here, but I don't really know how they work. A sieve! I'm Jim Place Games for this. Uh, it might be hard to, to draw. Oh nice! Jesse Jeffy, you first real job as a stock boy when you're 13, several years straight, 100% of your paychecks on computer games. Oh my gosh. Do you have a lot of your collection still, Justin Jeffy? <laughs> oh, Beta Human Studio says computer software was the only arena where my parents openly encouraged theft. Yeah, like uh, my my dad was not like a criminal or anything like that, but yeah, I mean the software piracy thing back in the day. I don't know. It's. <laughs> it seemed like, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna say it was okay, but it it was it didn't feel like you know so much as like physical theft stuff. Yeah, <laughs> is this the kitchen cake you threw with a spoon hanging on the wall? Eating with, yeah, I guess people do hang hang spoons, I guess. Yeah, um, the whole thing, yeah, this art studio, uh, this art style, um, it kind of, um, one of the reference points we're using for it is, uh, yeah, like the Aardman Studio Wallace and Gromit stuff, you know? This doesn't look that bad. Um, but... See, I know how to draw, like, to mask out of this, this area. Um, using this layer mask that I created, but I don't actually know how to recall that area back. Um, so that's kind of a problem. But I still use layer masks because of habit. Oh good, you still have most of your collection. It's so nice to hear. Uh, yeah, Gym Place Games, we all have those stories of like either our parents or ourselves like throwing stuff out or cutting boxes up or anything. Oh, Maximus gave out... Oh. Your old computer to your cousins. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's got those stories. I'm just going to add that extra layer of darkness back in. But this layer is going to be multiplied. And... Yeah, my, my, my tendency is to make everything look, try to look so perfect, and it's really not... I don't think that's the effect we're going for here. We're looking for something that's kind of painterly and stuff. And that's another difficulty I have, because I do tend to, like, over-polish everything. Yeah, that looks surprisingly compelling when you zoom out enough. <laughs> I guess you can say that of anything. I guess that works. Oh, Flukas, welcome back. Yeah, we are painting. I just, um, I've been painting this ladle. Actually, maybe I don't need that extra layer. Using kind of, I had this, this kind of, just a stick as a guide. So that's what it looked like before the ladle. And I'm just trying to... I couldn't model a ladle, so now I'm just painting it. It seems to be going okay. That's... You know what I can do? I can adjust the color of this. Uh... Is 
See, I don't know how to drop back into that. Oh, that seemed to work. Alright. Oh, another save that's going to take just a few seconds. Yeah, the shadow is kind of strong. I removed that one. Yeah, the, and, and I need to blah and I zoom out of this more often and just take a take a look at how this is working together. Judith Butler's lover, good to see you. Oh, good. And go on some. You watch Wallace and Gromit. I've never seen any of them actually, but they were part of the inspiration board that we were building for this for this room. And yeah, Judith Butler's lover. Uh, yes, I've really increased the resolution on Crimson Diamond the color palette too. Yeah, this is the new kitchen we're we're doing. Uh, no, this this is yeah this is for my friend Ilya's game. That doesn't have a name anymore, so that's going to be something we're going to have to deal with. But yeah, I'm doing this kitchen environment. I just have to like add more personality to it, and not be as close, like slavishly dedicated to the 3Dness of the model that we have here. So this is the model. I'm trying to paint in, paint everything in, and brighten it up, and give it more personality than the model. But the model is still being that guide. So that's what we're working on right now. Um, yeah, I'm not working on Crimson Diamond right now, but I have rededicated myself. After this contract is done, I'm going to be finished this contract in July. And I'm, I just, I, I need to get back to Pixel Art so badly. <laughs> I miss it so much. Because this stuff is a whole other thing. Okay, so we're going to make this one, the second one here. We're going to make this um, like a spatula. I think spatula is a super essential kitchen tool. Oh good, you had a big barn. You could store your collection in the barn. Were it not for the barn, all your games would probably have been chucked out. Yeah, just a Jeff, yeah, I, yeah, I modeled all these curved surfaces. Um, you know, you can see that this this counter is less curved. I can I'll probably model like I'll probably paint that so it's more gradual. But yeah, all this was all done in, in, in Blender. And yeah, I actually... Blender, I just did that one that, that you can see Nightbot's been putting out the... Tika, good to see you. <laughs> I've been... Nightbot's been um, thro throwing up the exact tutorial I did. I did a tutorial bedroom and from that I've been, I, I used that as the starting point to working on this. But of course this room is very different because it's basically set in like a spherical like spaceship thing so that kind of upped the difficulty <laughs> a bit but uh, I was fine. Uh, Ilya helped me get this started the room template and then I just kind of worked from there. A oh, Wallace and Gromit these two on PBS go Monsama. I think yeah, I just that's something I know they're good and I should I should get into that. I should get into watching those. Uh, Jim plays games. This is not an adventure game. This is a roguelike, turn-based RPG type of game. Elio was working on the Steam page t just uh, the today. Um, it's not up yet or anything, but I'm trying to come up with like the log line for the game and stuff. If you wanted some feedback. So hopefully I'll have something to show you guys, like a place to direct you to for this project soon soon enough. Um, but there's nothing as of yet. Apparently they started a Twitter for it as well, but there's nothing on it. So all in good time. A spatula City, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Judith Butler's Lover, I've seen that. Yeah, where the Chinese chef has that huge cleaver. That giant cleaver and everything. They do everything with the cleaver. Yeah, there was... Um, I used to watch a lot of uh, Iron Chef. Like the original the original Japanese Iron Chef. And yeah, they would just... There was um, Iron Chef Chen, Ken, Ken, Chen Kenichi. I think his name was. The Iron Chef Chinese. He had this giant cleaver and he basically used it for almost everything. That show was amazing. I think I need... I want to make the spatula blade bigger, I think. Yeah, 
yeah, if you love, yeah, do the bubbles love. If you love shapely curves, if you love wonderful spheres, um, you're gonna like this game. Just a Jeffy, um, Chen Kenichi, what did he make appearances? I know that Iron Chef Japan Morimoto was on the American version. He showed up, but I'm not sure if Chen uh, showed up. I didn't really watch the American one. Jim plays games. Have a lovely night. Have gonna have a good night's sleep. Happy Crimson Continues Day to you. Have a wonderful, wonderful. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Yeah, Matt's not a bad name. Good to see you. Yeah, um, yeah. It was family viewing for me too. The original Iron Chef with the captions. It was grand. It was some of the best. It, it was like. I don't even know if it qualifies as reality television because it was it's too good to be called that, you know? <laughs> yes, the time zones war. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, the um, Judith Butler's lover. I was mentioning to these guys that tomorrow morning I have to be up. I have to give a talk at nine because the the the, um, the the class that I'm addressing is in Staffordshire, which is in the UK, and so uh, I have to get up and, and and be alert and talking and 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 lucid at nine o'clock in the morning. In fact, earlier because. It's sort of like a game jam week for the students and um, they're doing they put some projects together and i said i'd help give feedback and so that's happening at eight o'clock in the morning so i have to i'm going to give feedback and like look at stuff the students done, have done for um an hour and then dive right into into my talk so i hope uh, i hope it's okay that's not what that's not the version that's going to go up on youtube the one that's going to go um, up on youtube will be later when i'm alert and i know what i'm saying Yes, Iron Chef America, yeah, Mark Dacascos, he was in Double Dragon. <laughs> the axe moving guy, yeah, on, on the cooking show, yeah. I, I do remember that too. I did watch some of it, I think, but I didn't watch every episode. Uh, Judith Butler's lover says, unless the talk is thank you for this Pulitzer Prize, I'm not getting out. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back to bed after, I'm pretty sure. But it's kind of amazing because um, they got, um, I think the opening speaker for the, for the event uh, was Andrew Oliver of the Oliver Twins who made those Dizzy games for Amiga. And so it's really cool that I'm not like connected to him in any way, but it's kind of fun to think that he kind of started out up the up up the event, and and I'm kind of closing it out. It's kind of funny. Karasla, it's good to see you. Is a cup like a mini bucket? I think a bucket needs a handle, like but a handle that goes a across over. So I don't know. I don't know actually if a cup is a mini bucket. Mini bucket. And hello, by the way. Yes. Because it would, yeah, I mean, if the if the cup had, like, a, a handle that swiveled, then maybe? Yes, Jesse Jeffy, the Oliver Twins are legends. And so, yeah, uh, the Oliver Twins, one of them, at least, is has been working on this object-oriented gaming language that's for people to build games that don't know how to do programming. It's called RichCast. And so the students for the week have been making projects together in, like, a jam type of environment using RichCast. And so if you guys, I, I watched the, the, the video for it and it looks really cool. I've, I've not tried to build anything with it, but I will be seeing what they've tried to build with it. Oh, Jim, Matt, good to see you. Welcome back. Wall texture looks fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, I realized that the wall would have to be painterly for sure. And I, and, and there's a lot of glow, there's more glow than you think coming from that, that hood. And so, yeah, there, so that's what it looked like before. And I just, I knew I had to apply 
texture to the floor into the into the wall wall slash ceiling okay it's homey kitchen yes <laughs> Oh, Slash Studio, good to see you as well. Oh, and I'm glad you also like the wall texture. <laughs> Very homey. Thank you, Cross Slash. Yeah, Jonathan Blow also working on, on his own programming language. Interesting. Oh, you want to <laughs> reach out and feel what the texture is like, Jim Matt? Yeah, I, I love, I love that that Ilya really picked uh, picked this particular type of a brush. Because, yeah, you don't see a lot of games that look like this, and so I'm really, really excited for what it's going to actually all look like when it's all put together. <laughs> Just a Jeff, yeah, I, I've heard things, but I, I don't know. I don't know I don't know that in him personally or anything like that. But yeah, uh, Andrew Oliver, rich cast. I, you know, I, I don't know anything about Andrew Oliver either. But um, yeah, if you want to check out his object-oriented uh, game, game thing, game engine that he's developing, that's... Uh, that's a thing. And it's really cool to know that he's active in the industry still. He, um, even even though he's been in the industry for decades and decades working on, you know, Dizzy and, and all the rest of it. So this spatula, I'm going to put those little holes in it, I think. And I also need to make the top wider again, too. Because it needs to accommodate that hole. It's 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 always so funny to me when um, when developers want to make their own engine for stuff. Because uh, yeah, I mean, from from an artist perspective, I'm like, I just want something that'll work. <laughs> the idea of building something to build something. <laughs> well, first of all, it's completely beyond me, and so maybe that's why I'm not. I f I don't find that idea appealing. But, uh, you know, maybe if I had the know-how, I'd, I'd be much more attracted to that idea. <laughs> Mousemith says, building en engines is a way for us coders to stand out. Yeah, something like, for instance, something like Thimbleweed Park with Ron Gilbert making his own engine. I just wonder, like, what his engine can do that he liked that other engines couldn't do, kind of thing, you know? I'm sure there must- I'm, I'm sure he had a reason, like, he doesn't- definitely doesn't have to explain himself to me, but... It's just, it's like, it's a, it's a point-and-click adventure game. The, I, the less work I, I need to do with that stuff, the better. And so that's why I think it's really cool that the Oliver twins, or Andrew Oliver, has kind of um, created something to help make games easy, make games easier to make. You know, I think that's really wonderful. Because I've certainly benefited from other people's efforts to making things easier to make, you know, like an adventure game studio. I, could, I couldn't make the Crimson Diamond or that, something like that. I, just, I don't got the know-how to do that. <laughs> Beta Human Studio says, being a software developer in today's world is like being a plumber in a world where every faucet is dripping. Oh, Dan. Uh, Dan says he's going to be delayed a little bit. That's cool. Let me just respond. Okay. Right. So yeah, Dan. Dan will be along a bit later, but uh, he will be along. Yeah, just a Jeffy. Dan is on tonight. Dan will will be joining us tonight. We're gonna be doing um. We're going to be doing some... We did Final Confrontation music the last time. Um, the last time uh, Dan was on. And in very much the same way that... In very much the same way that um, Colonel's Bequest has... You know, it has that confrontation music up in the attic that loops. 
And at the end of that, when the player does whatever the player is going to do, there is like a good ending and a bad ending that doesn't loop. We're going to be doing that tonight. Last look! Hello, friends! Good to see you. Long time no see. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, tonight, a last look is not... It's not a pixel art night. We're, we're doing... We're making a... Um, we're painting a kitchen, a 3D modeled kitchen, in Blender. Learning new skills. And yeah, I'm, I'm glad to be learning new stuff, but it does... it takes a lot of time. And I feel like I already take so much time on, on what I do usually anyway. Except pixel art. Pixel art actually, I feel like I, I've got down but illustration and stuff those things take to still take me forever and I just I don't know I'm, I'm always in awe and, and madly jealous of people who can work quickly uh, Jester just Jeffy asks um, has Dan seen the Tom's gaming thing what's the Tom's gaming thing just Jeffy I don't know if I know that thing yeah, the last look, the Glorious Pixels. Yeah, the Glorious Pixels are, are, are slightly on hold right now because um, my friend from college, he got uh, a um, Ontario Media Fund grant to make a game. And so he hired me for two, for two, um, two months full time to work on his game. But the catch was I have to learn, I had to learn um, how to use Blender and how to use Clip Studio Paint. Which, which I have been doing, um, but yeah, it, it takes a heck of a lot of time to learn stuff. Oh, <laughs> oh right, that's right. Okay, that's why you rung a bell, Jester Jeffy. Yeah, um, yeah. So the the link that Jester Jeffy put up uh, in chat is Tom'sGaming.com did a write up of of the Crimson Diamond and said that the game was quiet. And you know what, the game, to be fair, there is music in the game, but it's not playing all the way through the game. Um, which I can understand that criticism, because at the time when EGA games were around, it was kind of, I think, a space-saving issue. They, they didn't really have the, the space to just have wall-to-wall -wall music. And I actually, I personally kind of prefer when games are kind of quieter and they don't have music all the time. Um, so that I think that was one of the things that the, the Tom's Gaming guy said about the game. But you know what? The guy, he wrote a lot and he gave a lot of feedback and so he took the time to do that and I always appreciate that. <laughs> Some cold truths in that article, Massa. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot I certainly can't argue with, you know? And Last Look asks... May I ask how progress is going on going on the game? I hope this question is not too annoying or something. It's indeed been a while and I haven't done my catch-up homework. Oh, don't worry. There's yeah, no need for homework. And no need to apologize about the question. I don't I certainly don't mind answering the question as long as the people who are listening don't mind hearing the same answers. Yeah, I don't mind. I definitely don't mind um, answering. The game yeah, the game is it was going well. Currently, um out of the 7 chapters, I'm about 30% finished chapter 5 in development. But, um, I, like I said, I've taken on my friend's game on contract for two, two months part-time. I mean, two, two months full-time, so I haven't really had time to work on the Crimson Diamond stuff. Um, yeah, because as, 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 you know, there is time outside of full-time, but I've, you know, I've been working on this talk I'm giving tomorrow. Um, there are other bits and pieces here and there that I haven't been able, that I've been working on. I've been working on other stuff, um, but working on other stuff plus the full-time commitment for these couple of months means I just don't have time to work on on the Crimson Diamond stuff but as of yeah as of um like mid-May I was 30% through chapter 5 of 7 so I'm feeling pretty good about that progress but I'm not sure if it's going to really launch like late this year or not um but um I also have said on this stream that I'm feeling super antsy about not really working on the Crimson Diamond for the past, you know, weeks, it feels like forever, and so when this contract is up, I'm definitely gonna try to focus on it more, and try to take on less, uh, to try to take on fewer contract work. 
try to take on less contract work. Yeah, try to take on less contract work. Um, but still, I'm going to still be doing stuff, working with like Strange Scaffold whenever Zalvir needs me to, to work on anything because that stuff is pretty part time for me. And like, I love the diversity and creativity of stuff that I work on with Strange Scaffold. So I'm going to keep doing that stuff. But I'm going to really try my best to, um, to really buckle down. Um, because yeah, as I'm painting this stuff, painting this stuff is okay, but I really, I really do miss working on my game. You know, I really miss the programming. I really miss the pixel art and, and, and all that. So, but I am glad that I did this cause I am learning a heck of a lot. Judith Butler's letter asks, who is this Dan people keep mentioning? Does he have anything to do with artificial popcorn flavor MT32? Yeah, <laughs> he you, he'll be he'll be joining us shortly. He's a little bit delayed, but he will be joining us shortly, and uh, we're gonna be doing some music. And yes, that studio late this year seems pretty ambitious. Uh, yeah, I I don't <laughs> I don't think it's gonna happen this year. But I will I will try my best without like burning myself out on it. But I'm yeah I'm gonna really kind of focus and and you know just kind of be frugal with my time, frugal with my money, and just get there, you know? But will I still, you know, occasionally pick up the, you know, cool stuff if I get the opportunity? Probably. I probably still will. Um, but, like, nothing that's going to be, like, nothing full-time and like no yeah no commitment of this of this scale yeah less fewer fewer lessers oh yeah lost luck says so cool to hear how you enjoy working on the game i was afraid you would feel burnt out or something it sure can happen on long lasting solo projects and honestly that's another benefit of working on other people's stuff like this this to work on this full time it means that i like really can't wait to get back to my own project so there's the benefit of that as well um, so there's a lot of reasons why, you know, taking on other stuff has been beneficial because I'm not getting tired of my own thing. I'm, I can't wait to get to my back to my own thing. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, but I need to. It just looks like like a, <laughs> it looks like an ice scraper <laughs> for like a windshield right now, and and it needs to not look like that. So we're gonna add another layer, and we're gonna add like holes in it or something. Maybe like three slots. Yeah, this isn't it doesn't really look three D yet. It's just these lines. Our last look asks, do you wonder if you're going to feel nostalgia on working on the game once it's published? Oh man, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to feel a lot of things once it's published. I think the first thing will be like relief. But yeah, I think I'll I, I will feel I think I will feel nostalgic about it because I just tend to feel like I, I I tend toward kind of melancholy anyway I think, and so yeah absolutely because it'll mark kind of the end of a, a very significant part of my life, and it really it, it actually it it signifies a huge shift in direction for me, um, and the start of so many new things in my life that it's going to be super bittersweet to finish it, I think. Oh, wow. Uh, Judith Butler's Lover says, a time frame for Silk Song's release has been announced, so that can, if that can happen, I believe you can finish The Crimson Diamond by your goal date. I, I... <laughs> I, I, I admire and appreciate um, your confidence, Judith Butler's lover. 
Oh, thanks, Jesse Jeffrey. Jesse Jeffrey says, I'm so happy for you that you get to work on your game at your own pace and that you have continued to you continue to be excited and motivated to get it done when it's ready good for you thank you yeah i'm super motivated to get it done and what happens next i don't know what's what happens next that's another thing that's going to really figure into my feelings of it when i finish it is what happens now and dan if i dan and dan and i have talked about it what happens now you know we're, we want to still stream but what are we gonna what are we gonna stream It looks bizarre. That it's a weird looking spatula. But I don't mind that it looks weird. I kind of like that it looks like strange cuz it's a strange place. Um uh, although I think I might round the edges out a bit on it, but we'll do that in another layer cuz you know me in layers. Oh, Slash Video says, it's no fun to play your own adventure game, but it's so much fun to watch other people. When you release it, you'll have a blast watching other people, I'm sure. And I know you have that experience, Last Studio, and so yeah. I guess I, I want to ask, you know, those of you who have released your own solo projects. Slash Studio, how did it feel when you finished Betrayed Alliance? And when you released it? <laughs> Either way, it says, after the game is released, one night to relax, then on to the next big thing. One night. I told you I have a list. I have a list of stuff to, that I want to do. I don't think it's going to take a night to finish all the stuff I want to do. Oh, Lost Luck. Yeah, I like I like having you guys here to, to talk to and just to... You know, cause we, I think a lot of us have similar experiences. Now you work, I know you were working on your own thing too, you know? And it's just nice to kind of share those thoughts and people can, you know, feel the same way or, or, or you know, say how they feel about how, how they work and your own experiences. You know, one day I had to relax before fan bug reports. Yeah, that's another thing, Karas Um Especially on a solo project, you know, even though I will be getting, you know, beta testers and stuff, <laughs> the first real beta testing, so to call, so to speak, pass is often when on small game projects when they get released. <laughs> that's the first time you really get get a lot of feedback. Oh man, yeah, that's something to look forward to. All the support post launch, that's gonna happen. Yeah, Stobel's Nights, exactly. It doesn't help that you have to play your own adventure game umpteen million times while making it. Yeah, I, yeah, you kind of lose sight of what's fun about it. And so it's really nice to see people streaming, you know, your game and just saying, Oh yeah, okay, it's something. It's, it's not, you know, just a joyless slog where I, I just, you know, repeat the same motions over and over again. It's, it's actually kind of nice. I want to round out this, I think. I think that's going to help. In Edenworth, yeah, um, you, you know, Edenworth says it seems like you've been getting a decent stream of new contracts. Hopefully that will continue post the Crimson Diamond. Oh, I really hope so. Yeah, it's it's impossible to say because things change so quickly. Um, there are some prospects here and there that might be might potentially be good for me after launch. You know, and depending on how well the Crimson Diamond does. Like, the perfect in a perfect world, the Crimson Diamond will be awesome and it will be my thing and I can just do that but I you know honestly I still want to work with other people here and there like I still want to work with strange scaffolds um but yeah I mean, that would be my ticket to kind of my own independent being able to just do that that would be the perfect the perfect thing but I, I still I still like to work work on other stuff and learn new things but in case, you know, in case the Crimson Diamond doesn't sell well, because who knows what happens when these things are released, hopefully I have options. Oh, yay, Strobel Snitch, you get to stream your for Next Fest on Thursday. <laughs> yes, I have to remember to act enthused over lines I can recite in my sleep. 
Cerebral Snitch, please, please, please. Um, if you have a, if your um, demo is available, if you have a demo and it's available for Next Fest, please put it in chat for everyone to take a look at. We love stuff like that here. <laughs> yeah, JBL says every other week Dan teaches you how to compose and you teach him how to draw. <laughs> crying over Locrian scales and Dan crying over ellipses. Yeah, we just have like a, a like a roll swap. <laughs> anything you can do, I can do better. I could do anything better than you. <laughs> yeah, cross loss it takes so much QA. So much QA. Oh my goodness. I'm lost like you're studying for exams. You wish you checked Twitch a few days ago. Would have loved to have the stream running while studying. <laughs> Good luck with your exams. Ah, oh, Slash Studio says, I'm not sure I can answer how it felt to launch a game yet because I released it silently in 2013 and decided never to finish it, then six years later decided to finish it. Oh, Justin Jeffy says, any way to get help with post-launch support? Some pretty smart people following you might be able to help. Um, it... I, it'll depend, I think, honestly. Um, I um, I've got some, you know, uh, some contacts that are gonna hopefully give me some, some support and advice about how to deal with stuff post-launch. So we we'll see about that. Oh, Bill Coon says, "Don't let the Crimson Diamond become the next loom. Gorgeous and memorable, but." The first of a series that never advanced afterwards. I have ideas, you guys, for the sequel already, and I'm really excited about it. And I can't, I can't let that get, you know, get into my head too much because I still have the first one to work on. But I do have, I totally have ideas for a second one, and I'm really excited about eventually. Gosh, finishing that, some starting and finishing that eventually, you know. Ugh. I'm going to try to treat this, this, um, treat this uh, shadow the same way as I treated the, the spoon shadow, but I'll do this on a separate layer. Thank you, Stillboot Snitch. I'm going to open that up. So there's Stillboot Snitch's uh, Steam Next Fest um, game that's going to be in that. The Frogs. Oh yes, love it, love it, love it, love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, so check that out. I've, I've got it up here, but I'm going to switch back to Twitch chat. <laughs> Good luck with your stream next fest, your Steam next fest. Yes, please, I'm glad. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supplying the link. Crossless is the Azure Jewel or the, yes, the Azure Corundum. Now, one of the um, many discarded, um, one of the many discarded names for the Crimson Diamond game titles was the Corundum Conundrum. I got talked out of that though. But um, most likely it'll follow that same <laughs> template. You like the Corundum Conundrum, Crosslash? Yeah, it's well. This the second one is not going to be corundum based, so I can't really use it for the next one. But I do like it. I li I I really like that name. Yeah, so, you know, I'll struggle snitch. I have done Steam Steam like uh, game fests, and the pla like the the platform for Steam steaming. The platform for streaming on Steam is not very good. There is like a, there is like a 13 second delay between the chat and what's actually happening on the video, I find. And I don't know if they've improved that at all since I've been I've streamed on Steam. But uh, yeah, it's not it's not like the best experience in my in my experience. Yeah, the streaming is bad. <laughs> yeah, crossless corundum conundrum does not sound good from a marketing perspective. Agree 100%. 
Yes, the corundum conundrum is a very clumsy on the lips. Oh. Oh no, Dan. Dan says he's gonna ha he's gonna have to skip tonight. Uh oh. Yeah, there is no Dan tonight. Dan, we I said that we had Dan in our clutches, but Dan has like undone his like bindings and he got away from the laser somehow. I guess my henchmen were not paying enough attention, but he seems to have eluded us once more. <laughs> Dan is chickening out. Oh no, Stobots that you had a game journalist doing a stream for you today. It took us an hour to deal with the issues. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear it. Hopefully it'll be better. <laughs> Dan is too busy for his only dance. <laughs> oh. Conundrum, con Corundum Conundrum, a novel that Nancy finds in the second game. I could add it as a novel in the current game because I do have bookshelves. But it, it is, it's a horrible name for a game. And uh, yeah, I was, it was good, good that I got discouraged from, from doing that. <laughs> yeah, JB, I take this setback as a personal offense. You and me both. Oh, he's fine. He's a busy, busy guy. Yeah, Dan's practically an MI6 agent. You go on summer. We're gonna do more cozy ki space kitchen, uh, and then we actually are maybe we're gonna do a little bit of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade in a little bit. Um, so usually what I do is around 10:30 I start in on Indiana my Let's Play. So it looks like we're gonna get a chance to do some of that. Unless I just want to keep doing this because this needs to get done. I'm so behind. You guys, I'm so behind on this stuff, really. Uh... But yeah. I might need a change of pace, but if, if I feel like I'm making really good progress with this, I just might make you guys watch this for the rest of this stream. Because, yeah. I'm supposed to have... Um... I have a meeting with Elia on Thursday morning, and I'm supposed to have this one done, and also concepts complete for the next like environment which is going to be an office and we're going to make it like kind of 70s office where you got those steel case tanker desks and filing cabinets and lots of paper everywhere and like buttons like like 1970s like nuclear power plant panels of buttons that type of a thing um in the in in, in an office so i need i'm behind and yeah that just might be what we do okay so we have a spatula. Actually, I'm gonna make that spatula. Um, it's too. It's too long. What's the um, copy merged? How do I copy merge in this program? Copy. How do I do that? It's not just the same, right? No, it's not. Okay, I did a it's control C, control V. That's not it. Uh oh. Hey, Karaslash says the Corundum Conundrum, a Lorbo 2 or indie library style pixel hunt searching the right bookshelf to find the book for the vital clue for a different game entirely, like the Tapestry in King's Quest 3. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, yeah, just a Jeffy, thank you for backing the frogs by Stribbletsnitch since. <laughs> yes, yeah, Stubblesnitch, I totally agree with your decision to stay away from physical backer rewards because I hear all kinds of stories about like nightmare stories and nightmare scenarios about fulfilling those. 
especially if you're just like a small team or just by yourself. And so, yeah, I haven't done any type of Kickstarter stuff for my game because I'm kind of scared of it. Because yeah, I don't, I can't, I, I can't make those promises. Oh my gosh, how do I do this? Okay, I can only think of the absolute most cumbersome way to do this. Okay, so this is spoon. This is uh, so. This is um, this is a uh, spatula. Spatula, and I've heard other like adventure game devs say that. Every Kickstarter they've ever done has lost has lost the money in terms of like fulfilling stuff. Spa Spatula, spatula. Okay, this one more spatula, more spats, uh, and this one. This is nothing. And I know, just a Jeffy, I know collectors love the big boxes. So it's kind of hard to, to resist trying to do them. Because who doesn't love a big box? Yeah, Crash Last, so long first time trying to handle the logistics and production of physical rewards. It sounds like hell. Yeah, I, you know, you just... you. <laughs> I'm terrified. I'm, I'm terrified of it. I, I don't... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to merge this. Cause I want to keep I want to preserve the layers because I'm a chicken but that's spatula and then I'm gonna use this to move this up in its entirety oh no your team can't get much smaller you're setting a few pounds fretting over it oh my gosh yeah take care still snitch it's tough it's tough out there for small teams or solos Yeah, and, <laughs> and Snitch says, yeah, I often wonder how these people fulfill their physical stuff without losing money. I think the answer to that is they don't. Because the thing is, uh, sometimes, like, one of the most common mistakes I've heard is about shipping. And forgetting to, to figure, factor in, like, international shipping and the costs associated with that, especially nowadays. Um, yeah, so everyone be super careful. It's better. Okay, third third thing. I don't know what the third kitchen implement should be. What else do we have? So we have spatulas, we have ladles. Um, something easy to draw. What else do we... I can start at least with like the whole part for the and the peg, but I don't know what to do with the bottom of this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's another. That's another. Um, Strobel snitch. That's another one where it's like worried enough, but offering people statues and faces on the NPCs. Yeah, that's another like one that sounds like a lot of work. And the yeah, t-shirts and stuff getting getting stuff printed is a big hassle. I use something called Society Six for my merchandise, um, which is print on demand. So if you go to Society Six, um, the number six. You can look up, I think, the Crimson Diamond, you should be able to find it. But yeah, all that stuff, like, I don't have to warehouse it. I don't have to deal with shipping or customer service. They handle everything. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I don't I don't even think about it. It's not like it's not like a money-making thing for me on there, really. It's just for me to occasionally get my own t-shirts printed. If I, you know, I've got my own t-shirt for when I go to events and stuff. That's pretty much it. Because, yeah, like, like Society 6 takes, like, 90%. I mean, you can set your own prices, of course, but if you don't, they just kind of take 90% of everything. So if you if so if you buy a t-shirt of the Crimson Diamond on Society 6, I think I get, like, a maybe $2 or something. But to be fair, they do everything. So, and I just, I just uploaded the artwork. And it's actually really, like, they keep on adding products that you can print stuff on, and they keep on um, improving their interface. So I, I just, I don't feel like, it's not something I'm trying to make money on, it's just for convenience to have it. Yeah, the knife probably wouldn't be hanging on the wall like this cross last, especially because I need to put a giant hole in it so I can hang. Oh yes, Lost Look asked, do you follow indie point and click scene in general? Curious if you heard about Norco, which released in March. Um, I follow, I follow a kind of Lost Look, although I haven't really, I've been, I'm super behind on playing stuff. Norco is gorgeous, though. It is... 
one of the prettiest games I've seen. Pixel art games. So yeah, for sure I try to follow that stuff. And actually looking through my, my GOG and my Steam libraries, I have I have Virtual Verse, which I'd like to try playing as well, speaking of. Meat Tenderizer, Bokun says. Yeah, just to Jeffy, that's pretty much what people have to do is like not be shy about um, charging like a huge markup to make up for shipping and everything um, for physical rewards. A whisk. Yeah, the whisk. I was thinking whisk garage last. I had a whisk in the concept for this. But yeah, I feel like whisk would be a lot of work. So I, I kind of am like going to not do whisk for sure. But yeah, that's definitely one that I kind of like thought about myself. Um, last look, I have not seen the evolution of, of Norco's pixel art. I've just have seen like the finished product and how amazingly accurate they've been able to um, recreate like light and shadow at, at a low resolution. It's glorious. It's really beautiful. Um, you know what? I actually have um, I have some reference photos I can check out um, that have stuff hanging on hooks like this, so I can just easily check one of my references and see and see what tends to get hung on these hooks. Different shaped spoon. Cup ladle shape. Um, yeah, kind of like... <laughs> Just a Jeffy's offering. Anyone else have a game on Kickstarter? Because I'll back it right now. Yeah, so anyone who has a current Kickstarter campaign for, for a game that you're making, please drop that link in chat. I would love to see them too. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly change to my face view while I open up the inspiration board I have for this. Um, and then I will switch it to that. Crossbow, Beta Human Studio. <laughs> If only it would fit. Okay, let me get to that. Uh, uh, you just seeing my face so far, hopefully. Amber Zane, great to see you. Great to, great to, great to see you. Could do a spider. A spider? A spider? Like a is that a, like a kitchen utensil name that I don't know? Wow, this is going really slow. We're using something called Mila Note to collaborate on um, visual reference. Okay, so control. Okay, so you should be seeing the Mila Lo Mila Note now. Yes, yes. Okay, I checked too. I chickened out. I checked. Okay, so these are. Um, you can see that this is the Swedish chef from the Muppets Kitchen, and you can see he's got a bunch of things hanging. Some of the stuff is 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 more um, conventional than others. <laughs> Sausages? Mm. A, a saw? A tennis racket? Okay, yeah, some of these I don't... But there is a meat tenderizer, so that's a, that might be a good one. Uh... And also, like, there's these children's play sets that I would have loved as a child. That have hanging things too so we've got like a forky thing you know what yeah like a forky thing right like um a pronged thing like you'd have at a barbecue that's probably gonna be that's super easy to make yeah this one's got like a pasta thing a sideways ladle spork <laughs> yeah but, yeah beta human studio if a whisk is too much effort definitely not a spider yeah, one of those strainer spoons with the holes. Um, I But I think I'm going to do like a barbecue poker thing. Hmm. And here's some Wallace and Gromit. They have... Uh, a potato masher, and there's only two different kinds of spoons on their hanger thingies. Oh, I love how grotty it looks. Yay! Um, okay, so 
First of all, I don't think very many people know about these potato mashers, so that's not a no-go. But I think, yeah, a barbecue... Like, which I didn't see in any of these pictures. Like, one of those barbecue-like things. Okay. It's just like a, you know, one that's got the two prongs that you stick into meat? And tongs. Tongs also is a good one. And spork. Spork would also be something that would read easily. <laughs> uh, Jim Matt says, are you saying potato mashers are generational? I'm saying that certain cultures that love potatoes would be more familiar with them. I didn't grow up with potato mashers in the household, but we have one now and they're really good. Um, the potato masher, I bought my mother a potato masher from Muji of all places, which is a Japanese based company. And it's a little one. You can get a little potato masher. But yeah, I was just, you know, we had a rice cooker. We didn't have the potato masher. <laughs> Therefore, oh, thank you for the resub. Fantastic. Hooray Subversary. I'm over watching part of the final of Colonel's Bequest. We'll watch Maple People next week. Yay! Colonel's Bequest. Oh, the cool kids use ricers instead of mashers. Jobo says, I don't even know what a ricer looks like. I just know you can buy riced cauliflower now. Mashers. The masher is very handy, but it would be hard to make. So you know what? Yeah, I'm going to make um, just like a forky thing. A forky thing. <laughs> just a Jeffy. A ricer is... I don't even... I can't even... No, I don't know what they look like. I don't know if it's a machine or just a tool. A kitchen tool. What it is... Um, is... Uh, it's something that... Uh, <laughs> you can buy riced cauliflower now. It's a thing you can buy. You can buy it frozen and it kind of... People use it instead of rice rice. Because it kind of has like the look and kind of the text... Not really the texture, but more like the look of rice. But if people on certain kinds of diets don't want to eat rice, they can rice cauliflower. It's like hard to explain. I, I'm not doing a very good job, so. Yeah. I've only, I didn't realize you could buy, or buy ricers. I've heard that, yeah, I've heard that, um, you know, the UK in particular is, is, is very potato heavy. Um, so I wonder if, if every household had a potato masher. UK and maybe like Ireland and Scotland or something. Maybe very potato heavy. Okay, frozen, okay, so just a Jeffy, okay, frozen rice cauliflower you kind of get. You do enjoy a keto diet mostly, but still ricer is a thing. Picture a pot with lots of tiny holes in the bottom, like a colander. Yeah, <laughs> as Bill could, riced is a word. Isn't isn't it something? The world that we live in, right? Living language. I wonder if rice. I wonder if riced, riced is a verb in the dictionary yet. I mean, by by now it surely must be, because uh, lots of you know lots of people. Like, yeah, just as Jeffrey mentioned, for keto, it's like not... I guess cauliflower doesn't have carbs in it or something. So if you want something like rice but don't want to eat rice, like riced cauliflower is your bet. Okay, you fill a tiny pot up. It has a lever with a press that you push down. It forces the potato or whatever through the holes. Yes, log riders of all. Delightful. I need. I think I need to make this wider. Oh, whoops. Yeah, the the lasso tool in Eclipse Studio Paint is M and not L, so that's why I pressed L. And the move tool is uh, not V; it is K. Isn't that delightful? That's your jam, just a Jeffy. This um this song is uh uh what? it's French. Du viens tu bergere? I 
I can't, my French is terrible. Yeah, hockey's, hockey's, it can be a pain to learn new ones, but um, my gosh, they definitely are a time saver. I feel like this has to be thinner, but I want them all to be the same thickness. So this has to, I'm gonna make this, move this out more too, whoops. Oh wow, you're using Unreal Engine, Jester Jeff. You control W is the default hotkey for duplicate. That's terrible. That's I, I don't like that either. Duplicate should be like D or Shift D. W is con control W is like close the close the the file, close the window. Exactly, yeah. Uh, control W ingrained for closing tabs, opposite of duplicating. Control D should be duplicate. Duplicate. <laughs> J matches. In Pho Photoshop, control J. Well, just, I, I've never used control J in Photoshop in my entire life. Duplicate. <laughs> Neon Totem. Speaking of French, the Playdate has a French horn app. Oh my gosh. First of all, Neon Totem, good to see you. Second of all, a French horn app? That's amazing! I love it. I, I love seeing on Twitter all the cool stuff people have come up with on the on the play date. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. France horn. <laughs> that's ah, uh, I love yeah. I just love seeing the creativity. Wonderful. Oh cool! Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Last look. You finally found original tweet of Norco's dev. You're curious about the evolution of the pixel art. I got two different versions of the same room the author did. No, yeah, um, just drop them in chat. I can, I'll, I can take a quick glance at them. Um, I can open them up in Safari. <laughs> Bill can control J for downloads. Yeah, I know that in like web browsers, control J shows the stuff you've downloaded. Downloaded. It still but says I can't wait to get my playdate either. I've I don't I have a dev unit, but I don't have a consumer unit. So I I want my consumer unit because hopefully like that mirror program will work better on it. Although they just had an o I, um, OS update, so I should update my OS and see if that helps fix everything. So maybe I'm complaining for no reason, which does sound like me. <laughs> Beta Human Studio hits Control J. Well, I'll be damned. Well, it depends where you were hitting, like what what you were in when you hit Control J. You know what? I'm gonna save this game. I save the game. I'm gonna save my progress, and I'm gonna hit Control J in Clip Studio Paint and see what happens. Hmm. Oh, Maximus, I have not seen the Playdate Mad Max meme. Okay, thank you. Okay, the old school pixel art. Thank you, Lost Look. First link. Okay. Oh my god, I love the I love the way that looks. The old school. 440 by 255, 16 colors. Okay, I love that. I love it. Okay, okay, okay. Next one. Latest current. Office. I like them both. I can't even decide which one I like better, Lost Luck. Yeah, please share Just a Jeffy, the Mad Max meme on Twitter. Control J Purge save folders. Let's see what what it does. Ready? I, I don't even know what that did, so I'm just gonna press undo in case whatever it did was something I didn't like. Nothing happened. I Lost Luck, I love that vibe that they're getting with EGA, except I know it's not EGA because they're using a warmer yellow, but I love how that looks. Like, I really do. I like them, I love them for different reasons. I really like that, though. I, I like how the colors kind of clash, but they work together still. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, thank you, Marcimus, for the Mad Max Playdate meme tweet. Oh my god, that's great!
That's great. That's great. I love it. That's so good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah, it would be cool if there was that option, like in the special editions for um, the LucasArts games, you could just kind of um, switch back and forth on the fly between that final version and that other I, I, You know me and how I just love that type of old school lost, uh, the old, old school um, graphics lost look. Uh, you're frustrated you prefer the old school one. Oh, lost look. Yeah, I... I... I don't know. I, I, I think I do too, but it kind of depends on the, the tone of the game. I suspect that I also will though. But the new art is also gorgeous, and I think it really probably fits... It's, it's definitely kind of moodier, so I can, you know... I might just like it better for that reason, but just on a complete, completely aesthetic level yeah you know how you know me I, I love how it looks like a sweater that the, the that particular 16 color palette they're using in the dithering it i want to see that on a sweater just a jeffy asked any other play date group two peeps receive any uh, shipping details yet i um just i know that as of i was in group two which i thought i was in group one but i wasn't <laughs> I was in group two, and uh, yeah, as of like June eighth, they said okay, as, just make sure by June eighth you let us know if your if your address has changed or anything. And then after that, I haven't heard anything since then. So yeah, we're in the same group. Okay, let's expand this out. I think. We should convince the devs to release an old school version of Norco Lost Look. I wonder how much of the art was done that way. Yeah, honestly, look, uh, Lost Look, that's a good point. Like, that old school look that the Norco, oh, the preliminary Norco art had, it's not, I've not seen that type of style in 16 color before, and it's kind of what's amazing about it. And I love the, the um, even like the, the resolution they were working at, too. And we're gonna put in the whole. I guess the hole is supposed to also change in perspective because this is curving around. Ten twenty. Cool. Okay. You know, the, I was just looking at the, this um this this glass that's down here. And my first instinct is to put a red and white striped straw in it because that's just, I just do that all the time. And I've done that a lot in my illustrations and I can't even help myself. And I don't know what that is. Oh, that's what's missing from this one. This one needs to have that dark bit in this area for depth. Which means this one also needs the dark, the dark bit in there for depth. The, the, the handiest um, command in Clip Studio Paint that I found so far is this Control Shift. Control Shift click will take you to the the applicable layer, which is kind of nice. So it's really easy to just jump to the one I need. Well, you can't even see that on this one. What's going on? It just it's okay. It's there. This. <laughs> if it's a bright expectation that studio put a red and white striped candy cane instead. Hmm. I, am, I just can't resist. 
I don't know if I'll be able to resist making it a, a, a straw. And I, yeah, I don't know what that is. How come this isn't darker? Mm -mm. I also for oh, I also forgot to fade fade in this blend it better. on the rest of this shadow. This shadow is a little bit tricky because the prongs are going to be curved away from the wall and I don't know how to do that. So there's, there might be you might see some daylight here. Molotov Enox, welcome! Hello, long time no see. Wow, I, I <laughs> honestly, yeah, I don't I don't even remember the last time you were here. It's great to see you. Tonight is not a pixel art night. Tonight is um working on another a different her game in a painterly style. Mm. It's pretty thick, so I need to make that thick. Almost like one year ago. My gosh. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, Jesse Jeffy says, I'm curious about how you share your work with a team using some sort of version control system or just email files. Um, it's a shared Google Google Drive uh, Google Drive thing. And so when I upload something, I set the sharing permissions to, you know, whatever, and I, I send a link in Discord, and then uh, Ilya just picks up the link from there. Yeah, it's, yeah Crimson Diamond has gone through an upgrade. No, this is this is a different game. I, I'm, a, a now nameless game that we're doing right now. But yeah, I, I'm kind of, I put Crimson Diamond on hold to work on, to do this contract uh, for a friend of mine. Who got uh, who got some funding for something? So I got to get some work in, get some paid work in, learn some new skills. And yes, there's a link there. I'm using I used Blender to model this all this stuff. And so yeah, learning Blender has been has been kind of cool and maybe useful for the future. It's one of those things kind of where many months ago Elio was putting together this proposal for this grant and he, he asked if he could put me on the on the uh, application and I said sure because I figured it was kind of a long shot because these things are usually long shots. <laughs> Lo and behold! <laughs> so I kind of I really was not expecting to be working on this really but it's a good thing it's a good thing. Yeah, and the other link just uh, that Nightball put up is, yeah, um, Witch Strandings, which is the third game I worked on with uh, Strange Scaffold, is launching on the s July the 7th. And if you go to the, I assume when you, if you go to the Steam store page, you will see the amazing, they did a live, like a live action trailer, like they filmed an actual trailer, like on, like in the olden days. Which, it looks really cool, so if you haven't seen the trailer, I showed the trailer on stream, but if you missed it, you can definitely check- Well, I didn't say definitely, 
I'm assuming you can check it out on the Steam page. I have not looked. <laughs> I just said Jeffy to ask, so your friend who's creating the game is manually managing 100% of the complexity of including submissions from multiple contributors. Well, um, it's really only me. Like, he's doing art as well, and I'm, I'm also doing art. And then he's got, like, one programmer or something. So it's kind of, um... Everything's pretty, like, there's not multiple, multiple things, you know, people doing stuff so much. It's, um, we're, it's almost like just the, each person's kind of responsible for their own thing. So I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not 100% sure how that works, but yeah, it's, uh, there's not, like, direct collaboration happening on the files. Although sometimes, you know, if he wants to adjust something on something I've given him, then he, he just does that. Um, and then just uh, uploads again and sends back or something. And yeah, I didn't mention that at the top, but Nightbot has the the link to the pres premium physical edition on the Nintendo Switch for Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator, which was the first game that I, I worked on with um, Xavier and uh, Strange Scaffold. Oh, that's looking pretty good, except I need to bulk out this here. That's... Okay, I see. Just as Jeff, you're having to rally a team of Unreal devs and artists into some system, keep it all organized. Very interesting. Interested in how others are doing it. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not super privy to how how things get organized. I just know. Yeah, that's how I've been doing stuff for Ilya. Is I just upload them to Google Drive and then I share the link. And then with the inspiration boards, we we both put up like images on that Mila note board for whatever environment we're currently working on. Oh sure, oh, Mousman says, by the way, Nightbot looks a bit spammy, perhaps you could use tiny URL to shorten the links. Yeah, probably, Mousman is probably a good idea. In fact, I'm going to turn off the Space Warlord one. So give me a second. It's easy enough to remedy. Streamlabs. Oh, no, it's not on Streamlabs, it's um, Nightbot. Just want to make sure that it's on my face again. Get my face. Oh wow! I gotta adjust my my um. Wow! What happened? Is this one better? That's not better. Oops. Why is it looking so bad? Give me a second. Wow. Maybe I have to change the color. Give me a second. I think the lighting's changed. Wow! I look really warm right now. Let's pick this color. Okay, turn it on. Do we need to turn this light up or something? It's so weird that it change. It can change so much. Like, why is it that? Just to turn turn this color correction off. It's bothering. I hate when it's flickering like that. Come on. That's bearable. <laughs> Close. Oh, Nightbot. Oh, no one's using my Nightbot Maximus. What are people using nowadays? Not, not that I, I want to like change the way I do things because that's more work. But I am interested. Do the people use Streamlabs or something? Um, I, yeah, I will turn off some of the timers just for now because it, it, it does look a bit spammy. Uh, let's disable the Blender tutorial. Let's disable the space lore. Okay, uh, I think that's it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, that looks, yeah, the green screen looks mildly better now. Okay. 
Oh, I see. These days you need boss with contest rankings, quizzing, quizzes, etc. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know any better. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I have like streamer envy sometimes because I see all the other the cool stuff other people are doing. I'm like, why don't I? Why don't I do that? And then I don't. Time, 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 time. Only so much of it. But yeah, thanks for yeah the note. Like it, it did look a bit spammy. <sighs> Okay, so I've done, I've done the tongs, the weird-looking spatula scoop, and the ladle. And yeah, I guess what I'll next do is um. They look still precise though, don't they? Still, like I have a problem with trying to make things look too neat. Oh, I forgot to put the peg. <laughs> okay. Yeah, some, some streamers really have it all together and figured out. Oh yeah, I think someone asked me what my bucket list was like after I released the Crimson Diamond. Yeah, one of them is, yeah, I would like to... to make better overlays and have fancy bots on my streams. I, I would like to... Um, learn more programming so I can make better games. I want to try making a game in Adventure On. And Adventure On is like this really cool browser-based engine where you can make text parser games that also work on mobile. <clears throat> I want to sculpt another big ceramic bust in real life. I want to play games that I haven't played, um, that I have and like that are waiting in my queue. I want to. Fix my Patreon, like re revamp my Patreon stuff, because I was supposed to do that and I haven't done that. Just as Jeffy, you say, what's a streamer to do? I think I just look at whatever tech the top streamers are using and just go with that. Makes yeah, yeah, that's a great way to do it. Like I, I see some people who have really gorgeous overlays, and I, you know. Because I can make the art myself, I don't even need to commission people for that, so I I could potentially be doing that. Um, but yeah, it's just time. Time, time, time. But yeah, bug, that's, a, that's definitely a bucket list item. Oh, Stobuts, that you love text-based text games? Work on an, on an online one for like 20 years? Yeah, um, Stobuts, since you might like, I'm going to put in... So if you if you type in Adventure, Adventure On into itch.io, or itch.io, that is the engine, and a lot of people have made games, and you can just play them, you can play the games directly from your browser, or you can, if you just visit the site um, on your phone, you can just play, like, dozens of text parser adventure games with, like, super simple graphics on your phone, and it's kind of joyful. So if you love that type of thing, I hardly recommend it. Yes, Mousemus, yeah, the little dogs on Pixel Justice Streams, she's using stream avatars. The dogs, those dogs were amazing. Yeah, Pixel Jess has a gorgeous, gorgeous setup. All that stuff, I would like, I want to learn all the things. And I want to implement all the things. I need to even make more emojis for my own stream, because apparently I, I can make more. Which I haven't done yet. Molotov Inox says, uh, Two weeks ago I convinced a friend to play Day of the Tentacle on stream, now he's in love with the game. That, that's a good one. You're a good friend. You're a good friend to recommend that one. Probably a top five game for me. Oh cool, you made your own engine stable snitch with a friend. It's not something so easily publishable and it's still very much a work in progress. Adventure on is like it's got really good documentation, but yeah, even just it's so cool to just visit the itch.io page and um you can just play the games um right on uh right in the browser and or and you can even I think it even saves somehow and also you can play on mobile it's awesome and apparently fairly easy to use because um I think I mentioned that I, I judged a game jam for it once and some there were two people who had never made a game before and they were able to make something and it was great they made great stuff in adventure on P 
people making engines. You have my admiration for sure, because I certainly cannot do that. Some, the handles are very straight. Oh, on uh, on, Mass, on these tools? Yeah, I, I, I was thinking that I want to put some curve in that ladle. Because they, yeah, they, they just were like cylinders when I, when I, when I modeled them in Blender. There's probably, I think there's a way to even model. In fact, I'm going to try that. But I'm going to first make you know, its own little group here. This is a fork. fork. So I'm going to just stick these two things in here. I wonder if there's a way... Because I, I think I could like use like free transform to warp this. Um, in a way to make it look convincing, but I think it's going to need some work. Um, okay, so I, I don't think I put the ladle in its own thing. Okay. Right. So the just a tools ref is this thing. So, if we duplicate this, I'm going to try to do this, it's probably going to fail, and get rid of the other reference points here, and it would just be this one. Yeah, it's just this one. Where's that dot? Okay. So th this is just the rod for the ladle. So if I put this into this area and I duplicate this and then I merge. This whole thing. Oh. Where's the thing? Merge. Uh. Oh wait, maybe I have to turn it on. Merge selected layers. So that's just the ladle. And then this is what? This is a guide. You can see everything's kind of a mess. Okay, so this is this. Okay. So here's just the ladle. Let's see what happens if I try to deform this. Transform. Free transform. Oh no, it's got it's still got a hold of some other stuff. So what's over here? Oh Jesse Jeffy, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the appreciating that this is this is hard work hard work and stuff. Ladle streaming. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think I might just... This might be boring for people. Oh, good. Uh, but I, I don't know. I'm kind of behind on my work and I might just work on this for the rest of the evening and for another hour and then call it. Because, yeah, I have... Um, I was, I'm was i supposed to also have finish by end of week uh, an office environment that I haven't even started. And I don't know if that's, that's that sounds very unlikely to happen. Because I still need to do concepts, model, and then stick all the elements back into Blender and then paint over them. I just, it's not happening. So you might just get this whole night of this. Fair transform? Wait, where's the, is this a mesh transform, isn't there? It's not going to be it. Mesh transformation. Okay, here we go. Yeah, there's a curve. Yeah, there's a curvy transform. Oh, 
what's the oh no? What's the oh no? What's the oh no? Okay, so there's a curvy, and then I can just redo the um Yeah, that's gonna work. A whole night of the gym and Last Crusade. I don't know if I'm gonna get to Last Crusade. This might be like a like no dessert. There might be no Last Crusade pudding. This might just be Julia fruit fruitlessly trying to catch up on work. Yeah, Stobel says I don't think I'm gonna finish the office by the end of the week. It's not happening. Yeah, and I, I honestly I I I'm really doubting my ability to finish that. It's just, I don't think it's gonna happen. But yeah, that's like that's a this is a good start on this, isn't it? And just with some minor adjustments, this this can do. Does it need to like curve back up again? Actually, let's do that again because I feel like I was missing an, a, a bit more curve. But we do have the idea. A bit too much <laughs> indie pudding. Uh, yeah, I feel like it can curve, but it also it needs to curve down, but then curve back up this way. So this part. No, wait, whoops, wrong way. Come back. So this part goes this way. And then this goes... This part goes this way. Kind of thing. There we go. It's like, yeah, I think it needs to be angled a bit more up. Yeah, I... I, I usually like on art streams to give you guys a bit of, like, in, indie, indie, like a bit of adventure game fun. But, yeah, I'm kind of behind the eight ball a little bit tonight, so you're going to get nothing but this. Uh, and Dan tells me that um, he should be good for next week. We will see. We will um, retrain the henchmen and update, you know, our, our traps. See if we can't get Dan in. Yeah, the AGI, yeah, just as Jeffrey mentioned, the AGI Sierra games, and that is something, another thing on my bucket list, which I should really write down, but I just, I have not, is I want to make even a little game that's done in AG, Sierra AGI style, with the, them double wide pixels. I find that extremely appealing. I also want to make an adventure game on the playdate of my very own... That's also on the bucket list. I want to make a voxel room, like a pixel art room. That's also something else on the bucket list. Yeah, Dan. Dan said, yeah. Hopefully next week he should be good. Um, but yeah, you know, Dan has all kinds of uh, things going on, so he sometimes can't make it. Which you know, it's life. I almost feel like it needs to also be some slightly rotated to hang like that. Bill Coon, thank you so much for being here. Have a great night. Good luck with your electric typewriters. Those things are awesome. I love them. Oh yeah, Dan. Dan. Dan is all over. You know, Dan. Dan sometimes has to go to. Oh, what happened? Dan. Dan sometimes has to go to um, Jamaica to go uh, to go rehearse and stuff. Why isn't this going on top? Where is this? Yeah, that's fine, but why? This shouldn't interfere with the fact. This should be at 100%. Okay, there it goes. Yeah. Yeah, Dan has to do a lot of traveling for 
you know, gigs and stuff, so. When we get him, we're fortunate. Oh, Anna, good to see you, Anna. Anna, 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 CGG is co-host of the Classic Gamers Guild podcast. Anna, how are you doing tonight? I wonder, Anna, I had some, um, some links that were yours. Yes, there they are. <laughs> Anna is, um, Anna CGG, is, she has a business in Victoria, BC called Translucent Finishing. And she does custom wood finishings, custom built wood furniture, knife blocks, cutting boards, and coasters. You can find her on Instagram at that link that Nightbot put out and on fa the Facebook page. She does gorgeous work. They do also, they, they produce some um, gorgeous, like, wood, wood goods out of reclaimed wood. Um, I'm, I've mentioned this before, and, and she was actually, Anna was, Anna, were you my first guest or my second guest uh, on, because I've had a few guests um, on, on the stream, and Anna was one of them. I haven't done that in a while, because it's a bit of work to coordinate, but I would love to have more people on. First, Anna was the first guest on, on the stream, and, and she's lovely and a great, great fan of adventure games. And uh, it's, it's wonderful to have her around. And I do want to show. Lost Look, have a great night, by the way. Um, thank you for, for dropping by. You have a new batch of cutting boards, butcher blocks, and coasters right now. And Anna, so this is this is one I have. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. And Anna is, um, she sells these for very reasonable prices. So, it, they're, you know, like this, this coaster, beautiful live edge coaster. This one was five dollars, and I enjoy it and I love it every day. So check out her wares, um, and it's great because this is wood that would have just gone in the garbage, and she 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 takes it and she repurposes it and she makes these wonderful unique objects. This is so smooth and wonderful. This is this is a. I bought a set of um, four coasters from Anna. APOC211, good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Happy Crimson Tuesday. Yeah, Anna's website. Yeah, so she's got the Instagram on that, uh, that link. Uh, Instagram and the Facebook page for her business. And so, yeah, this, this is um, one of the most gorgeous things that I, I own. And, yeah, it's so... Wonderful to know that, yeah, she made these, that she finished these by hand, translucent finishing, so this beautiful finish here. This resin, um, heat-proof, waterproof coating on here, it coats the entire thing, so I don't have to worry about it warping or anything. It's as perfect as the day I bought it. Mmm. And, uh, has new cutting boards are maple and purple heart. Oh, sorry, my website is terrible, I don't have a tech person. I also have, speaking of maple, I have... A maple leaf, a hand carved maple leaf that Anna hand finished, made of maple, ma made of maple wood, and it's 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 lovely. And I've got it here, but it's like back behind the curtain, <laughs> so I won't be able to showing it tonight. But I love it, um, and we bartered for it actually. Um, I I bartered a um, an EGA portrait of Anna for a necklace, and I love doing stuff like that. Okay, so ma back to the paint back to the paint oh yeah I was just warping I just warped this the spoon and I think that really does help um, but I do have to fix I have to unwarp um, the peg okay. 
I is the bye that builds the boat. I is the bye that catches the fish. That's this song. Lovely sea shanty. This is kind of looking wonky. Uh oh. That was bad. <laughs> I'm just gonna paint it, refix it myself without using the transforms. And Anna, I hope you're doing well. I hope your business is doing well. Hope your house is doing well. Another yeah, that's another bucket list item is get getting, you know, more guests on the stream. That would be nice. Nice to do. In fact, uh, just as Jeffy mentioned, he likes when I show things, I will show another thing that is on my bucket list of things I want to do. But I just want to fix this peg. Oh, I'm just gonna... Come on, peg. You work better. I'm just gonna paint it all blue. F oh my gosh. It's torturing me. Stop it. Look better. Good enough. Oh no, Anna! Oh, uh, says our business will not have a location soon as the shop is getting demolished at the end of September. We are still looking for a new site, so we'll keep you updated. Anna, good luck! Oh my gosh. Yes, I think we had talks about Victoria real estate and renting and stuff. Good luck finding a, a new spot, new house, new home for your workshop. <clears throat> Oh no. Oh no, I'm so sorry to hear it. Um, but I'm going to show... I'm going to keep it on the little little one. The little, but I want to show another thing I, I want to do. And I've shown this before. Seeing as I, I don't think, I oh my gosh, it looks bad again. What's why is this doing this? Why is my green screen so awful? <clears throat> because I'm not really going to be showing you guys Indiana Jones tonight. Um, I'll just I'll try to show a few more things. Okay. Oh <clears throat> uh, yay! And Anna says, if you ever want <clears throat> to guest, if you ever want to guest on your stream again, let me know. I'd be happy to join you. I was in a rush last time. I thought, <clears throat> awesome. Yeah, it's good to know, Anna. We might just do that. <laughs> uh, just as you'll be willing to be a guest too. It's nice to it's nice to have people here that that'd be willing to volunteer. Oh, uh, but yeah. So this, I made a um. The gigantic, heavy... This is made of ceramic, and you, you see it got hollowed out. Uh, and then filled with like a polyfill. So this got fired in a kiln. And I think I, I've shown this before. But um, I love I love like sculpting and do, doing 3D modeling kind of by hand. Um, but I want to do another one of these, and I, do ha I still have clay for it. Um, but yeah. That's the, another thing that she's she holds up books right now. I really don't know what else to do with it. This is it's like pretty heavy. Uh, yeah, so I I took um I took a uh, workshop. This is the first bust I've attempted, and I actually really like how pleasingly smooth that is at the bottom there. That's that took extra work. So I actually um I did a workshop 
uh, with this with this lady um, who taught sculpting, sculpting busts and stuff. And um, I actually paid for extra sessions because I wanted to finish it. And I wanted to give her this beautiful, perfectly level um, finish. And then also to spray her with this beautiful uh, matte kind of a texture. This took, okay, this took a long time to sculpt. This took forever because I kept on reworking it. I think in the end I overworked it. Um, but I want to do another one because it was, it was so much fun to do. So this is, it, this, yeah, it took months and I kept it wet the whole time. And I sculpted it in my bedroom, but I actually think, like, dry clay, you don't want dry clay in the air, that's very bad. But when it's wet, it's kind of fine. You just have to make sure every time you're keeping it moist, and every time you're finished work for that day, you just clean everything up really well, and then wrap it up. And I feel like that kind of means that there's not a lot of dust going on. Um, it's completely different though for like I had to sand this a lot too. I, I, I sanded it outside and I had like a double barrel mask and everything um, But yeah, this I, I, I labored over this for months and then um, There's a whole thing about um, prepping it for firing hollowing it out. I have a bunch of pictures Maybe I'll show you that to you guys eventually But yeah, I, I really enjoyed the sculpting experience and I want to do it again. And so that's another bucket list item oh, Where am I gonna put you? I can't put you back like right now because you're so heavy Can you sit? Can you sit there? Okay, you're good there. Okay. Yeah, the, the levelness of the bust, I'm really happy I spent the extra money. Oh, what happened to my webcam? To get her to show me how she does that. The, scu the, the sculptor lady I went to. Yeah. Oh no! The one you sculpted just exploded in the kiln. Yeah, that's always that's always a huge, like a really huge risk with it. So I'm so glad she came out intact, but like there were some cracks. Uh, but I was also shown like um, the the lady when I took the extra uh, sessions. She showed me how to fill in all the spots because like there were parts where her, where I'd hollowed it so um, zealously that her skin was really thin, and then some parts had broken even on her face. And so she showed me how to fill those and sand them back over and stuff, and worked out perfect. Uh, yeah, and I used to love working with clay. It's been ages. You did a horrible thing. You did a horrible thing. You used your old play school record player as a pottery wheel. Oh, Anna, that's so adorable. I love it. <laughs> I would be so tempted to do that. As a, and so you did that as a teen. I've also thrown a few lousy pots um, that are, like, are very bad. I'm not saying that yours was lousy. Um, I just, I thought you meant the horrible thing was the thing you made, but the horrible thing was the action of using your record player as a pottery wheel. Um, but um, I I love also doing like the, the pottery wheel and um, making pots and all mine are very heavy and not very good, but I had a lot of fun. I think also, I think I'm going to do the same thing to the spatula. Yeah. So this one is another one where I have to kind of copy out everything again. Because this part of the spatula is, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah, this is, I can't, if I just mesh transform this, it's not going to work, right? I just want to make sure that that's the case. Um, well, I don't even need to mesh transform, just move it. Yeah, okay. So I need to get that rod. I have to get this rod. Yeah, okay. So duplicate this. And erase everything else around it. Oh, <laughs> It had multiple speed settings, <laughs> and so it had like, what are the RPMs for records? I want to make a record joke, but I don't know enough about music to make that joke. But I do have a portable record player, and it does have different speeds or different sizes. Um, but just rest assured, I had a record joke in mind. I just I'm not uh, equipped to tell it properly. Yeah, 45 and 33 and 78. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. <laughs> RPMs, yes. Yeah, exactly.
Yeah, speaking, uh, you know what? Speaking of, um, yeah, I'll, I I've showed it before, but yeah, because I mentioned we're not going to be playing, we're not going to be playing uh, Indiana Jones tonight, so I don't mind being a little bit more generous with, um, with, uh, oh, what, what, why did that happen? More spatula. Okay, but if I put it in the spatula group, more spatula. What happened? What's going on? Okay, there it is. Okay, so that's spatula. Don't need this one. And this one is all of spatula. Yes, good. And actually a bit more that we don't need. Oh, need a ban? Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, sure. I can do... Uh, yeah, just a bot. Just come in here. Ban that name. Okay. Alright, thank you. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'll do another show and tell, but I just want to deform the spatula first. Uh. Okay. Yeah, I can't see myself finishing, starting, and finishing a whole environment this week. It's just not happening. Oh, there's still stuff that needs to. I'm just gonna blindly, with a huge brush, erase whatever else is involved in this. That's better. Okay. Yeah, I feel a little bad because I'm learning all the stuff, but it means I'm taking a long time, which means I just get behind and behind and behind. And then everyone, you know, you guys have to watch me do this, and that's not that fun. But yeah, I will show... How was I going to show? Oh yeah, yeah, my, my little portable record player I have. Okay. Uh, control tab. While that's saving, uh, it will show the portable record player. Oh, and of course, it's gonna shift to the bust. Oh no, I just... It hit the bust on something, but I think she's okay. Let's put her over here. Okay. I've got this Columbia Portable Player model, model GP3. And it's funny because it actually plays... Um, it plays the two sizes that you can play. There's a switch somewhere. Uh, but yeah, so this... It takes like... It, it takes a ton of batteries. It takes a ton of like double like D bat D batteries I think, but it's funny because when you <laughs> nice to have a USB port. This is a really old model. Uh, I don't know what year this was, but this is like a Can uh, Canadian. This is a Japanese like thing, and so what this is is um, yeah. You when you play the larger the larger records, it just overflows this entire thing, which is kind of cool. But you can also like you can see there's a handle. You can play this thing standing up. Like, well, if you have a big record, you have to, like, you could hang it on something like this. And you can play it hanging like that, which is kind of awesome. And you can see it says, it says Chuku Records here. And so I did, um, I had a, I have, I had a, a silkscreen print piece of art um, that, like, a friend of mine wanted to repurpose, asked me if I could repurpose it for a, um album cover. And so I repurposed it for an album cover. And it was going to be cover. It was going to be um, produced by Chuku Records. Chuku, this guy, I forget his name. Um, he's a Japanese guy who was bringing like, like rap, and stuff like that into Japan. And so he was, you know, he's bringing like uh, like artists, like, like Toronto-based artists and American artists to Japan to tour and stuff. And his company's called Chuku Records. 
And so I modified and I also designed the, the liner notes and stuff, like uh, the track list for the inside of the album and for him to produce. And as part of my payment, he gave me this portable record player. And that's like, yeah, this, I don't know what the name of that is, but it's like a mat that you, I guess you put the record on. He also gave me one of those. <laughs> you fall asleep in your chair, Blah and it's all good. Yeah, and I also have, um, I have the record too, uh, that uh, he gave me a copy of uh, the record that he produced, but it wasn't like the one, like not the printed album one. So maybe I could play that sometime. The artist is called uh, Mr. Attic, and Mr. Attic was nominated for Juno like ages ago. Um, but uh, apparently, uh, yeah, he he tour he got to tour in um, he toured in Japan, uh, maybe I guess two or three years three years ago now I think. And they actually asked they asked me if I wanted to go along with them, but I was going to Adventure X, so I couldn't go. But it been it would have been really cool to go to Japan on tour with like the, this rap artist and like his uh, promoter or, or whatever it was. <laughs> Missed opportunity. But I'm really glad I went to Adventure X. Here's <laughs> the bartering system. Oh my gosh, behold, it's 5 a.m. in Sweden. The sun is fully up. Oh, at 5 a.m., wow. <sighs> yeah, Juno is like a Canadian Grammy. That's right, Justin Jeffy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For that translation, yes. <laughs> Oh, you guys what, like a uh, West Side Story? You're a huge, huge fan. NSCGG. Did you see the new one directed by Steven Spielberg? I actually have not seen any West Side Story myself. Uh, and yeah, I'm also gonna um, also I will also deform. Uh, not not deform. Mesh transform. This guy. So that means I'm gonna have to copy this again. And erase everything on it except for this one. Stobel says you're not a fan of West Side Story. I have heard the music and I have to say I'm not a huge fan of West Side Story myself. Like some of the music's like okay but I think it's more like the setting. Like I'm not a fan of 50s stuff too much. So I think that's kind of um, one of my things with that one. I love musicals though. I, I love Sound of Music. I love Phantom of the Opera. I, I like Les Miserables. Um, what else? I actually really haven't seen that many musicals live. I saw Wicked, but I didn't really care for it. I saw Mamma Mia, but I didn't really care for it. Um, Uh, Anna CJ, yeah, you watch it as a kid, it's very singable. I, I also love like, Disney movies for that reason. Stobo says you also don't like the setting. Yeah, I don't know, something about the 50s. Like, I don't like Grease either. I really don't like Grease. Uh, Stuba she saw Hamilton on Broadway. Uh, oh, well, I've not seen. I've, I haven't even seen that one, and I know that they've got uh, like that. Um, what's that guy's name? He 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 made one. It was supposed to be really good. What's that guy's name? You know the guy. The guy. Yeah, I haven't seen. I haven't seen. I hear good things. I have not seen Singing in the Rain. Silva, Silva, that you like Greece. You don't like Greece either. I also don't. I'm not crazy about hair either. I there's some music in the Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dream Quote that I really love. Actually, I've not seen that show, but I really love some of that music. Lin Manuel Miranda, thank you. Uh, yeah, I have not seen it. Stuff to Jeff, Jeff, you're hungry. You haven't talked about food all stream. What should I eat? One of my go-to snacks is I like I like cottage cheese and I like putting salt and pepper and eating it on a cracker. That's something I do. Um, so that's like a go-to snack for me. Your mileage may vary. 
I also like Greek yogurt with a bit of maple syrup. <laughs> yeah, also, yeah, and, uh, yeah, it does that depend on what ingredients you have access to. Yeah, <laughs> you have access to Uber Eats app. The most dangerous app you can buy, You, I mean, you can have on your phone. It's just way too easy with that app. Transform, mess transform. I'm actually hungry myself. I have my fruit, my fruit snack here, but I think I could power through. Yeah, cottage cheese is lumpy milk. There's something, I something I like. I like the texture. It's got, it's like a bit squishy. Like, like, yeah, it's a bit like cheese curds. It's a bit squishy. I, I know. It's kind of weird of me. I've always kind of, I've, I've always liked cottage cheese though. One of my, my, one of the treats I would get myself when I was in college is I call it, my college had a salad bar and I would just load up on like cottage cheese and like not too much lettuce because lettuce takes up a lot of space, but like all the other like veggie parts in, in the salad bar and um, what else would be in there? Like even the pasta salad, all that stuff. And it would be so loaded up with stuff that you couldn't even close the lid. And it would be delicious. And I would put like dressing on it. It was awesome. It was either that or the suspiciously cheap value burger, which was like a dollar ten. It was a Harvey's value burger, and and I have I I don't know why it was that cheap, but I didn't ask. Oh wow, Mousemas, they don't have cottage cheese in Japan at all. You sometimes make it yourself. That's cool. Like I've actually made um, made like like paneer type of cheese before. Like it was really soft. That's awesome that you make it. So you're you're truly a devoted fan of cottage cheese then. Oh, so that's down here. Ooh, Anna, you had roasted cornmeal crusted chicken, wild brown and brown rice they browned in the butter first, and zucchini noodles with lemon and garlic and a bit of tomato. Anna, that sounds amazing. I love cornmeal. Mystery meat burger. Yeah, the neon time that, that's what the $1.10 burger was, and I, I knew the deal. You don't ask questions. You get a burger for $1.10. Oh, yeah, corn dog. Yeah, the Korean corn dogs, just a Jeffy. I think I showed a picture of Korean corn dog. You had poutine for lunch, Anna? Oh my gosh, yay! Oh, Alfredo. Alfredo sauce is deadly, but I love it. I really love cacio pepe. Cacio... Cacio... I forget the... But it's basically like pa plain pasta with like, parmes like parmesan, emulsified parmesan and cracked brown pepper. I could eat that for days. Go on one time, you like Sound of Music, you've only seen it a couple times. You like Willy Wonka? Best musical is Wizard of Oz. The thing about Wizard of Oz is, okay, I can think of this like... It was somewhere over the rainbow, and we're off to see the wizard. But I can't think of any other song off the top of my head from Wizard of Oz that is memorable to me. I, like, but I, I, the thing is, I'm really familiar with Sound of Music. It might be my favorite musical, because there's so many songs on that that I love, and I used to know it word for word, and my mom had the record. And I also am super familiar with Phantom of the Opera. But the only ones I've seen live are like Wicked and Mamma Mia and Phantom of the Opera and Les Miserables. Uh, I love, oh, Fiddler on the Roof. I really like Fiddler on the Roof. And Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, like as a musical, it's okay. It's I'm not it's not it's not my favorite music. I like Oliver better. Um my high school was if a, a a visual arts and performing arts high school and so they would they put on Oliver among other things. Like that's how I saw Oliver and Grease. No, Ol Oliver and Hair and uh, I can't remember other stuff, but yeah. 
Okay, so I saved. I'm gonna show you got. Oh yeah, I was gonna. Speaking of corn dogs, I I I've shown this before. Oh, Feather on the Roof is your favorite, Anna. I think Feather on the Roof might be my mom's favorite. You will sing that with anyone, any song. Okay, and Oliver's your favorite as well. Oh, you were in Oliver, Anna, as one of Fagin's boys. Oh, your dad found a creamer that is Fagin. Even says so on it, it's great. Just last Saturday? That's amazing. Yay. Yeah, if I had to pick my favorite, it's probably The Sound of Music. Second favorite is Phantom of the Opera. Because it's so, it's so cheesy and over the top, and I love it. Um, something I was looking for. Yay, yeah, this. Oh, don't make me rotate it. Rotate. Uh. Korean corn dog. I showed this before, but it's Korean corn dog. So this one has got tater tots on the outside, um, and it's got like different sauces. There's like a sweet chili sauce on it, and like a honey sauce, and there's cheese coming out of it. It's delicious. It's amazing. So that's, that's what I kind of wanted to show. And there's another show and tell. Okay, so we've done that one and that one and that one. I probably should probably make an adjustment to the tool rack. Because it looks too blocky. So let's do that. Duplicate. <laughs> you love Sound of Music and Phantom, Jesse Jeff? <laughs> Yeah, I, I have so much fun like streaming with you guys and just talking. It's it's I don't get out much, and so this is this is like a really nice thing to have in the week. Yeah, M Molotov Inox. It's okay. It's a Korean corn dog. I don't know what else they're called. If you just Google Korean corn dog, you might. I don't know if you have any in your area, whatever your area is like. But they'll put like dried ramen noodles, like you know instant ramen noodles, and how they're basically like a snack. They'll like crush them up, and that can be one of the outside coatings. You can get ones that have like you know um, different kinds of like meat in them. You can get them without meat. You can get them with just cheese. You can get meat and cheese. They're I've only had them once. Maybe all that's all I need in my entire life. But uh, yeah, it's like this elevated corn dog, and I I'll probably should try that again. Yes, Korean corn dogs over since you wish you had them nearby. Yeah, I, I've got a friend who lives in like an area where there's a lot of Korean restaurants and stuff, and so she's always up to date on the latest food trends. Another one I love is torched sushi, which is how they just take like regular sushi and they just torch torch the the top of it, and it it has this beautiful savory taste. That's awesome. <gasps> paella, I love paella. My mom's heavy knocks. Oh yeah, Bar uh, Baroness Estes. Go on some favorite Disney movie. Jungle Book has, has some of your favorite songs. I saw the live action Jungle Book and it actually wasn't that bad. Except for the songs. The songs were terrible. Uh, my favorite Disney movie is Sleeping Beauty. But my favorite Disney movie for the music is The Little Mermaid. And I think I've said that before. I used to sing that thing constantly. I'm not huge on the music in, in Jungle Book myself. But um... Little Mermaid. Lion King, also good. Also very good. <laughs> the live one. You didn't like the live one, Stilbushness? I saw the live one, and I honestly can't remember it. So, yeah, I know, this is not bode well, does it? I like the opening, the song that they have in the opening with the African singer. She was fantastic, but the rest of it, I'm not- I can't remember. Yeah, Little Mary Lion King. Oh yeah, that- that particular era of Disney. And I actually listened to the- the Little Mermaid soundtrack recently, and it holds up. It utterly holds up. Even the interstitial music, I-, I it's fantastic. Love it so much. <laughs> I 
Uh, just as Jeffy says, I genuinely, genuinely look forward to Crimson Continues Days to the extent that my six-year-old daughter knows about it and lets me, <laughs> lets me get her to bed early so I can join the stream. Hey, everyone. You're all my favorite people. That's the sweetest story, Just as Jeffy. Oh. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, still since you said the Lion, the Lion King live musical is soulless. I can't remember it. So yeah, like I said, that pro probably says something about it. Yes, exactly. Go Mansama, as a fellow artist, yeah. Sleeping Beauty, probably the most beautiful, beautifully designed one. Yes, the art director, I can't, I, I can't pronounce the name, but I know, like, Avon Earl, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous art. That's, a, yeah, like, art-wise, yes, 100%, Sleeping Beauty. And the art design of, you know, like, the dragon, the dragon lady villainous, amazing. Genuinely scary, so good. And also, like, the ending with, like, Once Upon a Dream, I, I think that song is glorious. And how, you know, she's dancing with her prince, and as she turns and swirls, all, like, the three good fairies keep changing the color of her dress, because they can't decide what color they like best. Oh, it's so charming. Yes, Jim, and even Earl is such, it is such a cool name. It's such an artsy name. <laughs> hmm. Every time I move, I hope you're not hearing, like, my earring moving, because I'm kind of hearing every time I turn my head. I hope it's not picking up on the mic. The, the art is glorious in Sleeping Beauty. Um, I'm trying to think of other musicals. But yeah, I think Sound of Music, because Julie Andrews is, like, a delight. Christopher Plummer, so wonderful. Ooh, Goldman Summer said, Avon Earl made a narrated documentary about his life called My Life. It's on YouTube. It's definitely worth the watch. Okay, no earring sounds good. Because they're pretty intense from what I'm hearing. But I do love these earrings, so. How can I make this? Maybe I should put like um, like a wood grain on this or something so this looks less bland. This is looking kind of bland. <sighs> oh, the other side. Right. Let's do the other side. Can I just erase it? Okay, I'll just erase it. Yeah, I should write that down too. Um, my life, even Earl. Which actually gets me thinking. Is does Disney still make um, 2D movies? Like, do they still do traditional animation movies, or what? What's going on? I haven't really paid that much attention. Are they all 3D now? Because I can't think of it, like I, the last mo like Disney movie I can think of is Moana, but that was years ago, and that was 3D. Music in the Descendants, Anna says, is pretty catchable and adorable. The Descendants. I thought that was like a movie with George Clooney, Clooney in it or something, but I must be mistaken. 
Okay, Stobo says The Princess and the Frog is the last 2D one they did. When was that? I actually haven't seen that one, and I actually want to see that, because it looks beautiful. Okay, so have a few traditional animators employed go on some says, but they haven't made any features. Disney's busy trying to stop Mickey going out of copyright, and probably like pumping out Star Wars stuff, too. I guess they're busy with that. Okay, it's a new series. There's a bunch of them on Disney. It's about the descendants of other Disney characters. Okay. Wow. Fri Princess and the Frog was 2011? Oh my goodness. The last one was Winnie the Pooh. Oh. Yeah, Princess and the Frog is just one I didn't I didn't get around to seeing, but I really like like the way it looks. It's really pretty. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna put some um I'm gonna make wood grain on this. See how successful this is gonna be. I'm just going to do it in this dark color and I might um, change the change the values of it and stuff if I feel like it's too much. But it definitely needs something. Maybe this will look really bad. Oops. Oops. Okay. So let us just make a layer mask of that. Yeah, two yeah, two D animation, just Jeffy, that's where it's at. That's definitely my thing. I, yeah, I mean, I liked some 3D animated stuff for sure, but it's just... It's, I don't know. It's not as magical. Didn't Studio Ghibli as well do, like, a 3D thing? Or is it still... Are they still working on that? Maybe? Oh, you missed 2D as well, Anna. Arcane Mouse Mist it looked really good for 3D. Every frame is a painting. I, I, honestly, Mouse Mist, I got to admit that I tried watching Arcane and I didn't like how it looked. It actually freaked me out. <laughs> and I can't even really put my finger on it. It 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 looks nice, I, I think, but there's something about the characters that kind of... I don't know what it was. I tried. And I've spoken to friends about it, and they agree. We all kind of like, oh, I don't know what, 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 why, but we've, we've got like a problem with this, <laughs> and I don't know what it is. And so it could be completely like just a, it's like an us thing. I don't know. Maybe it's just me and my friends. Oh, you stopped watching because the story mouse miss. Okay. Oh, go on some earwig and the witch or something like that. Goro's film. Yeah, yeah, it, it was Goro's, and it was. It was too... it was 3D, I mean, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, honestly, like, maybe it's a good show, and I know a lot of people love it and how it looks, so, you know, that's just only my opinion. I just... it wasn't for me. That's all. And that's okay, you know? Alright, Joe's here for you. Not a fan of Goro. <laughs> I, um... I, I've seen, like, Tales from Earthsea, and I saw Secret World of Arietti. And yeah, I'm not... I don't know. There's something definitely missing from it, I feel like. 
but it's you know it's got to be really hard to have a da your dad be Miyazaki. <laughs> I think this needs to... Jeff, Jeff, you think Little Mermaid is the perfect pinnacle of 2D animation? Tales of Earthsea, yeah, Joe's here for you. I haven't, I haven't seen all the Ghibli stuff, but Tales of Earthsea might be the one I like the least too. Oh, he didn't do Arietti. Okay. Okay. Arietti was Yonabashi, not Goro. Okay. Um, and, and Miyazaki did up on, um, Whispers of the, Whisper of the Heart. Did, I think Miyazaki did that one because I really like that one and that's one I hadn't seen until later. Okay. Yeah. Goro did up from Up on Poppy Hill. Yeah. Go, yeah. Up on Poppy Hill was okay. Yeah. I agree. I agree with that. I like this piece and I don't know what it is, this song. And his dad was one of the writers up on Poppy Hill. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I up on Poppy Hill was okay. But it's kind of like I only saw Whispers of the Heart relatively recently, and I'm shocked that I just never saw it. So thank goodness for having them up on um on Netflix. Okay, Miyazaki Mogoman Sama. Miyazaki wrote Whisper of the Heart. Yoshifumo, Yoshifumi Kondo directed it. Okay. I really like that one. I really, really, really like that one. <laughs> uh, Jesse Jeffy, you, you, you put uh, your Disney movies above, above Ghibli. And you think even Miyazaki would admit? To, um, you know, I gotta say, I, I read uh, Starting Point and the Turning Point, those Miyazaki books. Uh, and you say that Miyazaki would have to, like, admit to the superiority of Disney. He didn't actually like the Disney movies. I actually, well, there were parts of them he didn't like. He didn't like the rotoscoping, which was the uh, tracing of human figures for realistic body movement in an animation. He was really against it. Because um, he thinks that animation should depict a reality beyond the real in a way. Like, he didn't put it that way, but that's how I'm putting it. Almost like the expressiveness of animation can go so far beyond what is what our human limitations are, in a way. And so he was against rotoscoping. Yeah, exactly. Go on Miyazaki likes to show at the old mill. He doesn't really like most of them. He he likes Wallace and Gromit. He loves Aardman Studio stuff. I think I mentioned that before. In the one of the books, he mentions that... Um, one of the guys from Ardman Studio was going to be on a panel, and when Miyazaki heard that he was going to be on the panel, Miyazaki like was, you know, I think he was invited too. But when he heard that this guy was going to be on the panel, he's like, "Yes, I want to do that panel" because he was such a huge fan of Ardman. <laughs> Joe's here for you. Says early in the pandemic, my friend and I basically watched every Pixar, Disney, and Ghibli film, and Joe's here for you believes Ghibli greater than Pixar, which is greater than Disney. <laughs> Marisma says, good artists rotoscope, great artists don't. I yeah, I don't know. I feel like in my bones, I, I think I agree with that. Um, but it's really, it's just, it's such a good tool. Rotoscoping is so useful. You know, and so it's hard for me to really say that, but I think I agree. And I haven't seen any Aardman. I haven't seen any Wallace and Gromit stuff. Um, so I think I need to remedy that, especially if Miyazaki is such a huge fan. He's flushed away as their worst film because of the DreamWorks influence, but it's still kind of okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think... I mentioned um, when I was taking all my life drawing classes in college, my teacher said that uh, the model, like when you draw the gestures for the model, the model shouldn't beat you. Like, the model should not look more dynamic than your drawing. Because what you're doing is you're taking the, the, the image of the model and you're translating that motion and that dynamism onto a page and you are completely free to enhance that movement. And so the representation that you're interpreting of that movement should be greater than what you're seeing in front of you. 
And go on someone says, I think there's some interesting rotoscope from the old Fleischer cartoons. Yeah, I, I like, I think it's a good tool. I do. I think it can do certain things well. Um, and I almost feel sorry for the animators that work with Miyazaki because I'm sure he's super demanding. Yeah, exactly. Just a Jeffy. Like, that's a great example of rotoscoping being used well. Prince of Persia. Um, the original Prince of Persia rotoscope. It, it kind of blew everyone away, didn't it? So yeah, I think there's a place for for rotoscoping. Um, and I think, well, I think part of the reason Prince of Persia stood out so much is because, yeah, it's like super basic pixel art in a way, but to see something animated with such fluidity was completely revolutionary. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, Jordan, what's his name? Jordan Mercer? Jordan... I can't remember, is it? Mechner, Jordan Mechner, yes, that's right. Amazing artist, yeah. And I spent a lot of time in that game, too. Mechner, yes, Mechner. Yes. It's fantastic, yeah. I, yeah. And even, like, Another World, that type of game. Like, they're rotoscoping. I think it can really work. So I'm not going to say, you know, it's not a good tool. It's a fantastic tool. Yeah, and, oh, the strategy guides, do they have, like, concept art and stuff in them? Okay, it is 11.28. Thank you guys for your patience and watching me kind of go through making those tools. Sorry, no indie tonight. Um, I'm, you know, if Dan, if Dan is able to make it, oh, wow, my web capture stuck again. I'm so sorry that it does that. Um, and I don't know why it does that. But, um, yeah, if Dan can make it next week then it's not it's going to be another stream where i'm probably going to be doing more painting hopefully of the office environment that i have to work on and then we'll we'll we'll, we'll raid dan when he's available if he can make it and if not if it's if next week is an art stream i can't promise i can play indie next week because i do I, I have some catching up to do after all yes yeah 11 30 p.m yeah I'm, I'm about to to get going though i am going to look for someone to raid Oh, wow, and Joe, Jordan Mechner published his journals. Oh, wow, and okay, the Prima Strategy Guide has t an official one for one and two have tons of great art. Okay, I had no idea that they had art in them. No, it's really cool. I always thought, like, uh, like strategy guides would just have, like, screenshots or something, so it's nice to know that that isn't the case. All right, I'm going to look for someone to raid, and then we're going to get out of here, and I'm going <laughs> to... Go back to work on this, but not in front of you guys anymore. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, yes, I gotta go to Twitch. Oh, Robot Space is back to doing Colonel's Bequests. Oh, oh, okay, so in this interesting. Anna says that the guy who wrote the guide for Prince of Persia, Roussel de Mario, was a huge fan of Karataka. I was a huge fan of Karataka, too. I didn't have it. I had a friend that had it. It was awesome. Koba Commando playing Quest for Glory 1. Interesting. I'm going to actually, while I'm doing this, I'm... I'm going to shut down Clip Studio Paint temporarily because it is chug... It's making my computer chug, chug quite a bit. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to shut this down. Hopefully that'll free up some RAM. Okay. Let's see, who do, who do I have here? Okay. Yeah, Cobra Command is playing Quest of Glory 1. Robot Spacer is playing Colonel's Bequest. Oh. See, the thing is, is the past couple times I've raided Robot Spacer, the past couple weeks, um... So I feel like I want to, like, raid somebody else, but he's still playing Colonel's Bequest. So that's that's the thing. It's like, he's still playing Colonel's Bequest, and it's really hard for me to say no to Colonel's Bequest. Hmm. I think I have to raid Robot Spacer. I think I do. Because not only is he playing Colonel's Bequest, he's a really good streamer. Anna, thank you so much for being here. And yeah, um, you would make beautiful things. And I can't wait to see more.
Oh, well, you've been reading the Karateka journals on your channel, George here for you? That's great! <laughs> the Jordan Mechner Karateka journals? He's an excitable go-getter kid during that time. Yeah, uh, we're gonna rate Robot Spacer because I can't not rate someone who's playing Colonel's Bequest, especially because I know he's such a good streamer. Goldman Sama, thanks for being here. I always love the art talk with you. Thanks again for making the fan art. I've got like got it on my phone and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I Joe's here for you. It would go against the code of this channel to not rate Colonel's Bequest. Yeah, I and every time like I watch until he st like until he stops like until he stops because I can't not watch it. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna raid. We're gonna raid, um... You know who I mean. We're gonna raid Robert Spacer. That's what's happening. Yes, I like... It's just, like, it's awesome. I love it so much. So thank you, thank you for taking the time. Okay, so we're gonna raid. Hold on, I'm just trying to... Uh, load it up so I can raid seamlessly. This is painful. Okay. So, uh, we're gonna raid message is gonna be. Um, Crimson. You know what's funny slash not funny is last week when I was streaming, my LAN cable was like not plugged in at the router, and I was streaming using my wireless internet, and I'm like two floors up. That wasn't good. Yes, I'm just trying to, uh... I'm trying to do this on my computer, but it's chugging so hard. Yes, Mousemus, have a great night. Everyone, thank you so much. Happy Crimson Cut Tuesday. Um, have a great rest of your week. I will see you next week. We don't know what we're going to do. Hopefully, we've got Dan. If we don't have Dan, we, will, we still have a plan. Um, but yeah. It's great. Good to see you guys as always. A raid, Crimson Raiders, love some Dijon because of course Colonel Dijon. Okay, now I can't even spell Dijon. That doesn't look right. D I J O N. Is that how you spell Dijon? I have to look that up. Give me a second. I have, I have difficulty with that. Dijon. D I J O N. That's gonna. That would be a good Scrabble word. Dijon. Dijon. It's so bizarre looking. Dijon. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> you just had some tonight, Jim Matt. Oh, what did you have it on? <laughs> you read the label. Okay. Okay. Crimson Raiders love some Dijon. Hooray. Uh, and. Yes, like the mustard. A chicken nugget. Oh my god, chicken nuggets. Okay, so the the raid message will be Crimson Raiders love some Dijon hooray. Emoji. I'm going to set this up to raid. Raid. Robot spacer. I don't know until like I get the little... Okay, good. <laughs> the little preview with the face on it, it tells me, verifies that it's the correct place. Great. Okay, so we are set up to raid Robot Spacer, who is playing the Colonel's Bequest. I cannot resist, you know, I cannot resist a Colonel's Bequest. I mentioned like two or three weeks ago, Retrograde Tom. I'm usually not around on the weekends. I'm not usually like working at my desk too much on the weekends to watch streamers. But when I saw Retrograde Tom was playing the Colonel's Bequest, I had to watch it. I It's just a thing that I have to do. Um, so. Happy Crimson Good Tuesday. See you next week um, for something. And enjoy the rest of your week. And good luck with the rest of your week. We are rating now. <laughs>